made the, the lights go <laughs> off. <laughs> but y'all didn't get to see that. Y'all wonder what it's. But yeah, it's, it's that actor guy, man. It was good. Cool, man. What's good with you? That actor guy, Bats? Man, I'm doing, doing quite well, you know? Doing I heard fine. y'all recorded a podcast yesterday? We, we know we recorded one today because yesterday craziness happened and I can't speak about it on air. Okay. So, um, yeah, you know, we picked it up for the Fly With Bats podcast. You know, we're going to have that up soon. Probably tomorrow. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe and check out all our old joints. And, you know, check out what we're putting out there right now. It's, of course, me, Alpha Man Joe, who couldn't be here today. And, of course, you know, our other cat over there in the booth that, you know. Who, who is that over there in the booth? We're in the booth. What's up, Master Mind? How you feel, brother? What's going on with you? Lovely. I like the, the adjective you use to describe things. Lovely. <laughs> That's real. It's That's beautiful. Real. Yeah, I think but it's, it's been a good it's been a good Saturday so far for everybody. Is what I'm is what I'm getting so far. Huh? It you know, is. Consensus. Yeah, I'm, I'm no nice. I want to talk about a couple things. I have some things on my mind. Um, I made this Facebook post uh, Tuesday night. Um, there we go. There we go. I got oh, one, and, it, and um, it went mini viral. <laughs> it went many local viral. Yeah. It got like a uh, hundred some shares. Um, and I'm, I'm going to quote myself. We're going we're gonna to talk about it, about, you know, mm-hmm. why I say what I say, why I feel like I feel. There we go. But what mm-hmm. I say is, um, New Orleans is filled with lazy but really talented, awesome mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. with horrible work ethics mm-hmm. and medium-sized dreams. Yeah. And it, it, it started a bunch of conversations. It, some people were not happy about that. Everybody wanted to, wanted to claim, well, me and my friends, we're the exception. Not me. Not me. Well, okay, so clearly. Oh, that's that not, all, yeah, right. right. Clearly not, not everybody because, I mean, not me. Right. right. I ain't talking about myself. I ain't talking about Mr. Bats and Jay Steele and DJ Mastermind, you know, but, like, um, the it's like if when you think about New York City, it has a spirit of people moving. The, the idea of it is people moving fast, mm-hmm. working hard, getting stuff done. That's not the same idea and spirit you get when you think of the city of New Orleans, right? right. The, the Big Easy. I'm about to say, it's like, called the Big Easy for a reason, um, right? Right. You it's know, like a mentality. Um, I got a little perturbed with it, with the Big Easy mentality, and um, and it was it's the same. It's always the same thing with me. You know, I'm I'm. Punctual to a fault. I'm like, I get somewhere early and be pissed off at myself for getting there so early because I'd be the only one there, that, that type of thing, right? right? Um, and um, I was getting on some of my colleagues about, you know, punctuality because, you know, I, I shouldn't be the only, not, not you guys, but some of my, 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 my colleagues. And um, and it was making it seem like I was, like it was me. Like, I was like... You, what were some of the things they were saying? Because what's funny is when you bring this up, it made me think about some of the... The bad rep we was getting, even when the film industry was here in a in a, in a bigger uh, capacity. Oh, right. Some people they'll say that like like even from crew on, it'd be like certain people's worth that thick, certain things that they wouldn't that they would be feeling like, hold up, y'all not up to par. And right. I was like, dang man, like people we, from outside the city, outside the city will be hiring you know locals. And I'm like, and once again, of course I'm not talking to every mo- every person who work crew or every actor. Right, because I wasn't there. They weren't talking about me. Exactly, dog. But I would hear these things from different sets I'd be on. I'd be like, dang man, I just hate that. That's the thought process that you have with people from my city because I'm trying to be a representation. I want to, mm-hmm. you know, feel like proud when you be like, where you from? From New Orleans. Right. And I want you to think, oh, man, this mofo, he don't know how to, his, his work ethic probably screwed up. He probably going to show up late. He probably going to do the job. He probably going to gripe about something. He probably going to this, da, da, da. He probably going to talk. He's going to have an attitude, like attitude problems. That's another thing. It's like so many, so many issues out here from like outsiders when we talk about the locals. And I just be like, man, like, I can't speak for them. I only could do me. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you have this experience, I can't deny your truth. So, you know, when you, when you posted that, that was one of the first things that came to my mind. My main gripe is punctuality. Um, I know it's bigger than that, but, like, it, it don't cost nothing to, to be on time. But th- in this particular instance, they, the person I was talking to made it seem like, like I'm doing too much for, like, for getting places on time. Like, you know, like, he was like, you don't, well, you're the only one worried about people getting places on time. That is not true. Well, not I mean, true. well, in in this in this group of people, I I, I was the only the only one who was yeah. who was why he said whining about it, whining about getting places on time. And I was like, you know, I'm the only one who does and says a lot of stuff. And thank you for acknowledging that because yes, I am setting myself apart. And with that, I'm not gonna fall into the same type of. It's almost like you know, man, we we don't care why you care. It was like you know, dog, but because I care. And on top of it, it's like it's not you gonna whine if you don't get paid. <laughs> Straight up and down, exactly. and part of the contract was you had to be here at seven p.m. and you got here at nine thirty, and they want to talk about your pay. You are gonna have an issue, right? You hear me? So 
Do you see that a lot in, 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 in your field from as far as like the, the locals and then I'm sure you work with it a lot was, of people who are not? Yeah, it was funny when you posted that because I completely agree with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I totally agree that there's this mentality in the Big Easy where it's like you have these really ridiculously, I mean like stupid, talented people mm-hmm. that are just lazy and do the bare minimum but claim that they're so passionate. But because we have this mentality, everything moves a lot slower down here. You know, you have so many artists that are, you know, and at some point you got to hustle, especially living in New Orleans. So you, you'll be an artist working on one thing, but you also have other jobs. But they have some people that are just lazy and, like, they will just not do what it takes. Like, being punctual means nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, doing those things and having those sleepless nights and those late nights and being willing to, you know, leave and try. That's another thing. People don't be willing to leave. That's an issue. And I don't mean permanently. I mean temporarily. Like, Mm. even to, you know, make that step. To go set up the mean whatever. Like, people are not willing to leave. So, it's like... Because the truth is, I don't want to leave. I know I'm going to have to at some point, you know, but like, um... I'm I'm sorry. I I think there's a difference between having an actual opportunity and and, and people saying, Hey, yo, we got a meeting for you here. And some people would not show up to the meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have auditions and some of the casting directors that give me props for stuff that I'm thinking is normal. Like, oh, you memorized your lines. Like, right. what are you talking about? You're supposed to memorize your lines. Oh, you, you made, you came. Like, I don't show. Some just, people don't just, even show up. Don't even yeah, show don't even up. Show up. There's just people that feel like this, the fact that they can do something and expressing that, oh, okay, I am this is enough. It's enough, yeah. And, it. But then got that talk. And That's another thing. People be talking so right. much. What you say is sometimes I'm and sometimes also it's not that sometimes they don't know, you know, what direction they're going, what avenue to take. You know, it's. I think there's some things if you if you are focused on a goal or something that you want. Yeah. Um, when it comes to working toward that, some things kind of fall in naturally, like showing up, like preparing, mm-hmm. like being there on time. If that's really what you want, right? You know, like a lot of people achieve their goals without having. Um, the you know a formula set up for them to do it, but right. like naturally, there's some things that you they're just the, the basics, you know. Um, if you really care, I feel like you're gonna be a nerd about it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That, I mean that if you really care. And here's the other thing I noticed: is that big easy mentality even rubs off on transplants a little bit, man. I know some I know some people who are not necessarily from here, who just uh, just have a. a Lazy attitude about about you know the you get, work in here. Yeah. But if you come to a place that's already moving slow, uh-huh. exactly. It's get you. That's why because I, I highly doubt they'll go to New York with go to other places. Right. And they, they would, they would adapt things. to what it is, right? Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. It's not even like necessarily the people. It's the city. It's the the whole attitude of the Big East. I think it's the um the looseness with you know liquor laws and things exactly. like that. Part of the know, culture. I think B Mike said something real. What, was it was he replying under your yeah, thing? B yeah. Mike too said he said something about how um let me mother find it. Go ahead. Yeah, it, but I forget specific, specifically how he worded it, but it was basically saying that that's part it's like the, the bittersweet aspect of the culture of we have so many talented people and we don't treat talent like it's a money grab, like right. it's something mm-hmm. to be sold. Right. It's just right. just some people just talented mm-hmm. here. And part of it is part of our appeal, but it's also part of our downfall yep. because we're so used to talented people and being talented that <laughs> that is just whatever and then we be having a whatever mentality and that's where the reputation comes from unfortunately. Right. And there's a lot of people who are working and getting it in. True. Yeah. So wait, mastermind, is that is that a caller? Do we have a caller on this on this topic? Is that a caller on that wants to speak on this topic? Well, we can have a caller. Everyone that wants to talk to us. Okay. Ooh, well come okay. on, send them on through. We love callers. Alright. Watch your shoe. Watch. Yeah. We miss you, unicorn. <laughs> oh my god, it's Planet, actually, yes, thank you. In, the one in, that is round in the multiverse. Not um, <laughs> oh my god, and I, I do agree, you know, we have to start being on time, people, and doing things to progress ourselves in the industry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, how are you enjoying your, your other thing that's not a radio show right now since you want to you want to have a, a life outside of the radio? Miss we miss you. I kind of miss you guys, but no worries. I would be lovely things to do without. So you yeah, I'm here. <laughs> and that didn't sound stalkerish at all. <laughs> all right. Bye. 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 And, and it's not. 
Hey, you. <laughs> and I was about to say, it's not even just our the entertainment industry, man. It's like an issue because I know whenever I go to fast food restaurants, I get oh. mad because the service oh, yeah. is horrible. I, it's like, everywhere. It bruh, like every it's like part industry. of the culture of the I city. I am taken aback when I go somewhere and there isn't horrible service. Man. You know what I'm saying? And when you right. go somewhere outside of New Orleans and like an uh, ice cream machine. Is working at just something that's just something right. unexpected, like the some good things. ass service. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't even talking about that. That yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's outstretching when I get to community service, and some spots spots are amazing, but other spots I'd be like, man, how come you know what? Why come we can't keep? Why the culture is uh, of this amazing service not going to all whole, all over the all city? Over, right? You know what so I'm saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna read B Mike's quote, and then we're gonna take it to a break. Uh, this is from Brandon B. Mike Odoms in, in response to uh, what I said about New Orleans and work ethics. He says, I think the gift and the curse is that the duality is in all of us here. One can argue that that's the beautiful difference between NOLA and LA or NYC, where everything is for sale, talent and dreams. I think there's a lot to be said about how traditionally here, talent isn't connected to work or dreams of success. In a way, it liberates us. But in another way, it also abuses us. Mm -hmm. Real. That was when I read that on you, I was like, well, yeah, well, of course, leave it up yeah, to him to put it in, that, yeah, right. in the perfect words. And he was a perfect person to see it because he's been, been traveling a lot mm -hmm. with the he's, arts he's and still and yeah. still here. So it's like a good preview, you know, perspective right. to see, to hear from. Yeah, man, shout out to be Mike Odoms. Um, so we got a pretty good show for you guys this week. Uh, Darren Lindsay's in the building. He's uh, um, a little bit of everything. Renaissance man, he's... Uh, he, is a consultant when it comes to media and branding and marketing. Uh, he does graphic design, and then just this year, he got into event planning. He's got an event coming up later on this month with our friend Raheem Glaspie. So mm. he said he's going to talk to us about Great. that. And then a scribe called Quest, he was on the last show that was on this station, um, and he stuck around to kick it with us. And I believe he's going to perform one for our Facebook Live. So y'all... Share this video if you're watching it. Uh, by the way, for you guys that are listening, um, you can check out my Facebook Live. My name is DC Paul. If you want to see our behind-the-scenes, uncensored antics, uh, check out the Facebook Live video. And on that note, we're going to take a break real quick. Mastermind, what you got queued up, man? I got one of your favorite ones. What's one of my favorite ones? What is what? Oh, <laughs> by, by Jen, Jen, oh man. I was gonna step outside, but I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to this one, man. This girl here, yeah, she she blows down on this song, y'all. So this is desired by my girl Janae McGee. Stay tuned to the Misbelieve Radio Show and don't get nothing on you. Yeah, I'd like to stay and listen, but I also would like to stay hey, with the You could probably send them to the Misbelieve Facebook page now. Why is that? Um, because it might just be more. Uh, Cause I, I'm sh I just I just thought about it. I just yes, shared, I shared, yeah, I shared your live video yeah. from the page, yes, yeah. and that might just be more uniform and easy to people. Yeah, to well, that was the way to go live from the page. That's what I'm, that's what that's what made me think to do that just now. You feel me? But right now, at least you know we said go to the Misbelief Facebook page and like that bitch. <laughs> Behind the scenes, hey. mine's working. Oh, how that's the guest real quick. Hey, <laughs> I just walk in demanding that things. Scary. That's just how I am. Yeah. Raheem, say what's up, y'all. What's Hi, up, Raheem? Raheem? Fuck you, Raheem Gillespie. Ooh. Man, don't talk to me. Raheem, no. no. He didn't don't, mean don't, it. don't take that he on. He didn't mean sorry. it. Don't take it personally. Damn. Oh, gosh. What's the beef? Right. I'm going to figure that out and come back to you. <laughs> I'm about to find Keenan. I have Keenan somewhere. What's up, Brian? What's up? Brian, why are you letting these people witness my fatness, Brian? Well, you got to promote You got to promote the uh, Fat Girl Nola brand. I know. What kind, I of candy, what kind of candy you got? I got crunch bars. All I right. I have eight crunch bars. Halloween? Yeah, man. <laughs> I have so much Halloween candy that I ain't do nothing with. I might just go, like, nigga knock on people's doors and just, like, throw candy in there. <laughs> Reverse nigga knock on Trick or treat. <laughs> Take this back. Yeah. Take this back. Take this shit. This is hard. Mm. So oh, wait, let's talk. Oh, wait, what was I talking about? Let's talk about pumpkin pie. Oh man. I you, there's a hate pie. for pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie going on. This the thing. People are ignorant and disrespectful because sweet potato pie has been associated with people of the African American persuasion. Mm -hmm. and pumpkin pie has been associated with people. Of the Caucasian persuasion. Mm -hmm. I say that's bullshit. Do you? Yes. Facebook, do you I've agree? I've had both. Let us know. We've had I've both. I've had both all the time. I don't like sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie is good. 
But in my mind, I'm like eating mashed up sugar potatoes. Okay. You know, I, I know that's not what it is, but nah. But like a pumpkin pie is like buttery and rich and smooth and like tastes like fall and. This second time I'm gonna say it tastes like fall. Yeah, man. I like pumpkin. I don't know I what that means. Pumpkin. I'm a black person. The rocks with pumpkin. Wow. All right. Black pumpkin. I'm a bump. No, I'm not a bumpkin. Don't no, no, do it. Don't do uh -uh. it. But yeah, man. What's up, Lauren? Lauren, do you eat pumpkin pie? Lauren, you eat pumpkin? Thank you for watching. You pumpkin also, pie? is that Miss Two Cent? Who? How about you, Tutu? I feel lost without Oshun here. Oshun. What, like, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> Hi, Tiara. Like, the lonely misbelief misses. Well, let's do do your best Oshun impression. How about that? Hi, guys. <laughs> it's the magical mystical unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> like, what the fuck? We have guests in the booth. Let's go say hi to them, shall we? Darren Lindsay, yes. you're coming into the booth. Yes, how you doing? Come on to the booth. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, hi, Darren. Hi, Jessica. Are you sure you mic on that side, Jessica? Okay. Are you sure you mic on that side? Janae McGee, Desire is playing, man. That girl is playing. She be at the jazz market on Wednesdays. We'll be right back, but here, talk to us. Talk to us. Good, how are you? Good. You should be nervous. Yeah. What? No, I still be nervous, too. Yeah. And I'm here every Saturday. Cool. Yeah. I have to be nervous. <laughs> no, you shouldn't be either. Should be excited. I'm excited. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so let's talk about the style for a second. You look, I know you look like, yeah. So like, yeah, you know, a little something. A little swag. Yeah, you'll be okay. A little false swag going on. That's well, Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Do you eat pumpkin pie? I, uh -oh. Is that the same as sweet potato pie? Oh, Jesus, uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it I mean, not. that's all right. I mean, I'm sure I probably had it before at, at school in a cafe or something. Sounds at so school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cafeteria lunch. Yeah, but I'm sure I, I ain't yeah. bought the pumpkin pie. I made it, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> I was having a debate because I was trying to convert people and tell them that pumpkin pie is like way better than sweet potato pie. And I got a lot of people mad with me like... Trying to take my black card away and saying I'm tripping. No, it's the same thing to be honest. It tastes the same. It may be no, it tastes the same. I prefer pumpkin. Yeah, I mean I prefer neither. I don't care for it. I like pecan pie. Oh, I'm with you. See, yeah. pecan pie. Yes, yeah. I love so, pecan pie. So I could do some yams, but uh, I don't really care for sweet potato pie. Yeah, like pie. a whole pie. That's too much. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Are we in the? Uh, we're in the. That girl knows always in the eating spirit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving's coming up. What's a staple for Thanksgiving? What do you have to have, and who makes it? You who has what? to make it? Um, I do good at macaroni, but this year I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna do a seafood pasta this year oh instead God. of macaroni. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to I, do both. I may do both instead <laughs> of turkey and ham. Cause we think about it, we eat eat the same Thanksgiving food year after yeah, year for hundreds of years. So like, I like to switch it up. Right. Yeah, you know. Like the stuffing is a must. You can't have. Oh my God! You have to have stuffing. If yeah, you, don't you have can take your one turkey. Leaving, I'm leaving yeah, your house. Yeah. Okay. If you don't have stuffing. Peppers is cool, but everybody everywhere you gotta don't have eat stuffed peppers. peppers. You know, peppers. Peppers. but those are like stuffed peppers. Stuff, yeah. Peppers. Okay. So that's a must for me. Yeah. And I like fried turkeys. I like fried. I, I like them in the oven too. You know. But a fried turkey, if you do it right, yeah. you can see Popeyes, uh, of course. I don't know if I had maybe I had one. Yeah. I heard in L.A. they do Jello molds as a staple for Thanksgiving. That's what? A Jello mold. I I had that for Easter was but no, 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 no Jello. Yeah, I don't even know where you would get a uh... keyword in L.A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jessica, you're saying that the staple is the dressing. Oh yeah. It's not Thanksgiving love, without the dressing. I love cornbread stuffing. Okay. Yeah. But it's oh. seafood. Yeah, you have to have shrimp in it. You yeah. Know, yeah. Right. Do y'all do anything with cranberries? Is that part of y'all Thanksgiving life? That's disgusting, but... Not cranberries, maybe cranberry sauce. Yeah, okay. it's not mandatory, but it's nice to have all that for Thanksgiving. I always have it on the side for that one weird relative that, that one, that's like, you know, I want my cranberries. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaking of relatives, who's the one that you gotta be at Thanksgiving? My grandma. Give them a shout out. Grandma? My grandma. 
Hey, Mama. Mama is not on here. Mama don't have a Facebook. Yeah. Mama don't have a computer. Hi, you know Mama. Mama be doing? <laughs> I know. How about? Well, I recently lost my grandmother last year, right before Thanksgiving. So, just family. My mom only has like two or three living siblings. So, okay. uh, if my if her brothers and sisters ain't there, you know, it ain't really on Thanksgiving. I so, feel you. Yeah. All right. Black holidays. We talk about Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Did we mention? Did we talk about what we talked about? We did. We did. So I'm thinking about going to friends. Not, I'm not going to do it, but going to somebody's friends get a which you know, I don't know. That just sounds more feeling to me than a family Thanksgiving. I've had a true family Thanksgiving since Katrina. So oh yeah. yeah. My, my Thanksgiving is always random now. Random spot. Quiz. You don't celebrate things, you don't celebrate this. Why well, well, I gotta do all that? Family vegetable eaters. Genocide native people. We don't celebrate it. Yeah, but I eat my ass off. There you so, go. I'll be in uh, Lafayette with my little broski. You know what I'm saying? Mom Dukes. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice, man. I should, I don't even have concrete plans for it. I, I, should, I should care. Is there anything I'm looking forward to eating? Is there like a sudden like, oh, I hope no matter where I, I go, they have this certain dish? Gumbo and ham. Yeah, gumbo and ham. That looks what I'm I'm a stuffing fan, too. A stuffing fan. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. My. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Right. I like it. And we are back. Welcome back to the Miss Believe Radio Show, y'all. We're live on WBOK AM 1230. Or you listen to the podcast available on iTunes. Or you're watching us on Facebook Live. Or you're watching me on YouTube. Or, I mean, you know, any of our platforms. Because we're all over the place at The Miss Belief, one word. Um, check out the podcast at themisbelief.podbean.com. And follow us on whatever social network you're using. By the way, I'm DC Paul, the Millennial Arsenio, with no material on Vimeo. And who's this to my right side? It's that actor guy, Mr. Bats. All in your face. I got all kind of stuff in that YouTube place. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Vimeo, I'm, I'm following everything you're saying. He did that, he did that. <laughs> <laughs> who's this to my left? It's Jay still keeping it real. One half, one third of the misbelief, and this is Team Pumpkin Pie. Team Pumpkin Word. Pie. Word. I think you were on Team Pumpkin Pie alone. I was I think on it alone. I think it's a one-man team. It is okay. Like, all right. She was talking earlier about how, um, nope, she can't get nobody to confirm how good Pumpkin Pie is. Because we don't eat it. I had, like, one person that was, that was riding with me. So me and that one person, it's all good. <laughs> we, each other, that's all we, need. <laughs> we all we got. <laughs> all we got. And who that is in the booth? It's a boy, mastermind, inventor of records. Word. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. He's the Coon Slayer. Okay, I, I dig that, dig that. What was that last song you just played, man? Uh, that's right. Party by Vigorous. Party by Vigorous. Vigorous, he, he watches and hopes sometimes he listens. Man, we're going to have to have you on this show because every episode we play one of your songs and they're all so... Vigorous. Um, vigorous is a good word for it, but I mean, <laughs> like, nice quality, good songwriting, good production. And I've seen you performing live, so I know you got moves, too. So, yeah, man, I only play music by local independent artists here on the Miss Believe Radio Show. So if you're watching or listening and you're a local independent artist, send your radio-friendly MP3. Radio-friendly. Oh, and I hope you know, please, radio-friendly, please. I ain't trying to pay the FCC because you got a nasty mouth. All right, uh, but send it to themisbelief at gmail.com, and we'll put you on a playlist whether we like you or not. Yep, and if you ever want to come on the Misbelief Radio Show, hit that same email address, themisbelief at gmail.com, and we'll book you just that easy. Uh, so this here is our first interview this episode, episode 36 of the Misbelief Radio Show. We're here with the homie Darren Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Hey. He ain't got no headphones on. To you hear your gotta, applause. You got to take the fedora off to wear see? headphones. Like he, Y'all he can't see so him, but like he's so fly. He got the fedora he on. He is swagged out. He is so <laughs> swagged out. What up, Devin? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Can't complain, man. Um, so I'll be, we usually ask all of our guests, uh, the first question we always ask is, um, uh, do you know what a misbelief is? And, but you already told me you didn't know what it is, right? You're not familiar with misbeliefs? 
I know. No, no I'm not. No. You from here? You, you, I am from here. New Orleans is home. What, what part of the city you grew up in? Uh, I grew up in the third world for a little bit, but I was raised in New Orleans East. So. Okay, me too. I mean, these beasts. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So you ain't seen no misbeliefs in these? The little fruit, the yellow fruit. You climb up the tree, you take it down. It got now, the brown seed. Now, I had a grandmother that lived in the 17. I remember the the peach, like, but I think that was like a plum tree or a peach tree. Like, you might have thought it was a like peach the little or a Yeah, it's little. Yeah, no, it was, was kind of orange. No, yeah, it's like no, yellow orange. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm you a picture, but okay. Well, you just gave us your story. That was nice for a story about it. But if you got a grandmother living in the seventeenth and had a tree, did you? Did you ever eat one? I guess I did eat one. It was sweet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the seed brown, right? Yeah. So like that's you know, it was called a misbelief. Oh, a loquat Japanese plum. Only yeah, in, in the New Orleans it's called right. a misbelief, but that's loquat a Japanic. No, word. that's definitely what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Why you yeah. okay. come okay. on? This is what I was doing. So we call that that's, that's okay. misbelief. Yeah. So you have know, been indoctrinated. I real never quick. heard it called. That was called but really? Yeah. Well, what? What? What did you just call these plums? Yeah. Really? What are Japanese plums? But I'm glad that you're from New Orleans because if you say you're from New Orleans and you ain't never come across. It. It's yeah, like, no, whoa. literally, she lived on Willow Street, and we had a, a tree. Oh. And we get on my top of my uh, grandpa car. And there we, we go. Yeah. yeah, nice. There yeah. we go. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Now, now this interview is gonna go the right way. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, you—we've never. I, you are the name of the face. I see a lot, um, but we've never formally been introduced to each other. I know you do. Uh, you do marketing and brand management as well as event planning, right? Yes. yes. Um, how long have you been doing the, the, the marketing and branding thing? Yeah, DC. I dropped out of college about seven years ago. Which college? Um, Alabama A and M. Shout out. And shady shout out. But no, so I was a student on campus and. Um, Everybody was trying to find their niche. We had a lot of photographers, but um, and I was trying to be one of those, but there wasn't many graphic designers, so I decided to take a, a risk and kind of dabble in it a little bit, and um, it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. Okay, so so wait, seven years ago is when you started it? Yes, you started doing yeah, that? Okay. I was uh, 19 years old. Nice, okay. Yeah. Wow. You told me. Yeah, you're a young guy, wow. Yeah. Okay, um... Now tell me something. You you are a consultant when it comes to uh, marketing and branding. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so I, I I would call myself a branding and marketing mentor. Okay. So um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a self-taught graphic designer. But as I designed over the years, um, I found out that people were uh, requesting designs, requesting websites, requesting logos, but they weren't really educated on um, color palettes. So I kind of just educated myself on... Um, what brands needed to know um, and kind of go to um, strategies that they can use and uh, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Nice, nice. You did that for about seven years, huh? Yeah, well, so I've designed for about seven years, and about three years ago, D.C., I got into an uh, event. So my first event in New Orleans was three years ago titled Brandon and Brews. Um, and, and, it, and on that panel, I had three um, uh, branding experts. One was a graphic designer. Uh, one was uh, JT Thomas, mm -hmm. um, and he uh, does a little bit of um, PR. PR. Mm -hmm. And I had another guy, because um, I'm about diversity, he was a white guy. His name is, uh, uh, what is his name? His name is Jason know. Otis. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. White boy, white boy. Right, yeah. white boy. Yes, his name is Jason Otis, and he worked at Peter Mayer Advertising. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, he was a, well, you know his name. Yes, yes. <laughs> and um, so we all just came together. Uh, it was at Gravier Street Social. And um, the name of the event was Brandon and Brews. Um, at that event, I had um, some live music, a live painting. But uh, the most important event, the most important part of the uh, event was a discussion. So just educating people about branding, some tips they needed to know um, about that, and how to get your business off the ground. I love that, man. I would love to attend something like that. Um, all of the... Like, marketing and branding I've done has just been, like, organic, natural, like, when I feel like uploading something or taking a photo shoot or something. What, I'm going to ask you for a freebie. What, would, what advice would you give me um, if I wanted to grow my, my, my personal brand? Yes, great. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, with you, I would probably do... I don't know <laughs> You've you been sucking for so long. Yeah, right. Right. See, I've been doing it to me, man. But <laughs> what, I, what, what am I doing wrong? I, I, like, I like to uh, educate, educate people on this. Um, I would probably update a photo shoot, an updated headshot of you. And, um, yeah, no, uh, there's nothing wrong with an updated headshot. You always need an updated yeah, headshot. Yeah, at least once every two years or so, I would update a headshot. My, mine are kind of old, so, but this is information that you can use. Um, I've been to your website. What I would do on social media, I would probably create a graphic that lists all of the things that you do. 
Um, if you follow you, you can kind of go through your page and see everything that you do. But I don't think uh, people know that you're an actor. I read that on your website. Mm -hmm. um, so I would list all of that on one contact sheet. Maybe uh, simplify my um, my emails. Uh, maybe I would use one email like DC Paul or info at DC Paul. I would probably make my Instagram and social media at DC Paul. Um, my show would probably be titled The Misbelief, but it would be on in, on social media as DC Paul The Misbelief. Just kind of making everything cohesive. Yeah. Okay. That's a freebie. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Uh -huh. You're ready for that one. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I appreciate Cock, it. Cock, lock, and loaded. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, so, as far as event planning, you had an event a few weeks ago. It was an all white event, right? Yes. Um, and Shervy hosted it. I didn't go to it, but I know all the details. Um, Tracy Lee performed. Yes, yes, right? yes. Um, how, how did that turn out? It was a good event. Um, so, the event was originally supposed to be a uh, white linen night, and um, the city flooded, so I had to push the event back to uh, Labor Day weekend. But, um, yeah, this year um, I got into social events. So, as I mentioned before, two years ago I was doing branding and marketing uh, networking mixes. And uh, though people fell in love with the discussion, I fell in love with the arts of it. So, I love the live painting. I love to hear local artists perform. And I said, let me take all the education and let's just have a social. So, uh, in May I launched Denim Art and Soul. So, it was a denim party. It was my first social and I had over 100 guests. Um, I did not profit. <laughs> but I did get my name out there. I literally um, bought an ad on Instagram. I might have spent uh, $25, $30 on it. And people that I didn't know uh, showed up to the event. And they oh, bought wow. tickets and bought drinks. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was a good feeling. So um, they were like, do you let me know you're having another event? I'm like, I ain't having another oh, wow. event. Yes, yeah, this is. So yeah, so then I, I came up with Lennon Lavish Life. And um, that featured... Um, uh, Tracy Lee is an artist and then comedian. Um, and I didn't have a painter, but I did have an artist come. And uh, she had a few pieces of work that she was, you know, offering and selling and showcasing. Mm -hmm. So uh, after that, I said, I, I didn't profit off that one either. But I said, let me press my luck one more time with uh, Bayou Classic Weekend. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll do an all-black party. Last time, people were like, oh, D, I ain't got linen, I ain't got linen. But you got black. Everybody right. got black, you yeah. know. Right. And it's easy to find. You can go buy it. So, uh... This event, I will have live music by Raheem Glaspie. Mm -hmm. oh, and, uh, great. Shout yeah, out. Yeah. So I was going to do um, uh, poetry at this event, but the uh, spoken word artist just contacted me back. and uh, So it's just going to be live music and a live painting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be great, mm -hmm. though. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's going to be really good. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, hopefully um, you profit from that one, and then you, you do some more going forward. Yes. I'd like to make that. Yeah. That's Saturday the 25th. I yes. Believe, right? uh, where at? Grab your street social from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. on Saturday. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yes. Derek Ninja, man, thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Are you, how, how can people follow you on social media? Yes. Uh, uh, hashtag Darren Designs, D-E-R-I-N. Um, I'm available on all social media outlets, so you can visit my website at DarrenLindsay.com. That's D-E-R-I-N-L-I-N-D-S-E-Y.com. Please, no. please follow the homie, because I'm, I'm wishing for just cause continued success, dude, because you Thanks got this so this positive vibe, you smile yeah, on your face, it's like black boy joy on yeah, me, man. Man. dude, but, that, but that's infectious, yeah. man, and that, yeah. you know, that positive energy rubs off, man, so yes. like, yeah, thank you. Like yeah, I'm gonna go back and, I'm gonna go back and listen to all of that advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna update oh, them yes, headshots and make that I kind thought of I thought I had enough photo yeah. shoots. It, I thought I it's time to as often as I do photo shoots. It's shoes, time to retire Slim Hotel yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think it is time I, I, I update my my Instagram handle. Huh? No more Slim Hotel. Uh, no. Man, I was gonna make it the millennial. Or somebody already got DC Paul. Well, we got to punk them out of it, bro. We got right. to do it. It's some Asian person, and I'm afraid they. But there's only one some martial arts that I don't know. You're right. I, you know they what? They might know boxing, man. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe. But yeah. then I change everything to like that, right? It's okay. Just, you know. It's a whole new. And I had, you know, I had changed it to, I changed it to at the, the Millennial Arsenio for about 15 minutes, but I got commitment issues. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Derek, Absolutely. man. Thank um, you any so other much. time you want to come back here and talk about uh, whatever you got going on, events. Um, I want to know some more about marketing and branding. I got so, you. Um, I got you. Thanks, thanks. Uh, Mastermind, what you got queued up, brother? Mm. Oh, okay. We got two in a row. Nice. All right, Ayo Timmy. Uh, it's a Superman. So, uh, stay tuned to the Men's Believe Radio Show and don't get nothing on you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank you. Yes. I definitely go back and rewind.
Uh, uh, streamline things. Well, no, I, I take smoke pictures. <laughs> but, yeah. no, so basically, yeah. it's not even it's taking it's more more shots. photos. It's uploading what it is that you have. I know a lot of times people do do the headshots. They do have new material. They do have new singles artists, but they don't educate. They don't. They don't market as much. You know, a lot of people have things going on. Oh, yeah, I got a music out. Well, post it to your Instagram. Right. Like, Tracy Lee is a prime example. Tracy Lee may have about 15 uh, posts on her Instagram, but she's uh, torn right now. With, with Trump um, on Yeah, and you mm -hmm. wouldn't know that because she ain't posted, you know. So it's just important that we educate people as much um, as possible on social media. And we did. I hope you caught all that. Yes. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> nice. So, um, but yeah. But no, you do, you're doing a great thing. Uh and just making sure that people that you're friends with are uh, sharing your posts, you know, are also educated. Like, I was just educated today that um, that you can email people your singles. So I have friends that are artists. You play it on your show. I think that's a great, a beautiful thing. People may not know that. So if you are a local here in New Orleans and you have a single, you can email them at... Yeah, at themisbelief at gmail.com. Yeah, and they'll play it. Whether they like you or not. Whether I like you or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate you so much. DC you reached out to me last night at 11 o'clock. Great image. And, yeah, uh, man, because yeah. I had a guest fall through, but you came through. I like, appreciate it. Great image. Let me know again. Since you came in the funny part is I, I had to pee before I... But once I sit down, I get uh, comfortable. But I was nervous as hell coming in here. Oh, so nice meeting you. Bye. I need y'all a call. Right. So you want to get a picture? You know where the rest of Martin. Martin is Martin. 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 That's it. DC. What you say? You know where the rest of Martin is? You want to get a picture? Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We got to get a picture before you leave. It's kind of vibing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch that. You want to be here? You know, I'm purposely the only in my Raheem said he liked the hair, by the way, Jessica. My hair? Your hair. Whip it for whip it for the people. Whip it. Ooh. Wait. It's not going for Raheem. Hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to match the seasons and whatnot. I see that. I wanted to go lighter, but I can't. So. Would you use lemon juice? All burn or whatever this is right Thank here, you. man. What, what's this? It's like a reddish. Oh, it was on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the man, DJ Mastermind. Yeah, it's, it's, what up? What's happening? Yeah, yeah. What's going on, DJ? Man, nothing. Playing music. Tell right. us about this new joint that we got playing right now. What's going on with it's this? It's vibing, though. It's, yeah. it's, it's Timmy. It's your, uh, your Timmy. I like it. And the next one is Curious, I think. So y'all like that one when it comes out. I'll be your superman. Mm -hmm. And I gotta change the words if it was me, you feel me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know no what I'm feeling. What more do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing to him. Awesome. What's up, What's Facebook? What's going on? What's hell? What's going on? Chilling. It's, it's great to be here. We gotta talk about this mac and cheese. All that mac and cheese is serious. The, yeah. Uh, the, the ingredients are top secret, though. You're going to have to uh, slide in the DMs. Okay. And, you know, with some type of barter system, I don't just be giving out the ingredients. <laughs> yeah. yeah work to that. Okay. Uh, Back Granola, we have a mission. Yes. This is a, a mac and cheese <laughs> that's only made once a year, so that must mean it's good. Right? Yeah. The man said he can make a that mean mac and cheese. Oh, mac and cheese. It's, yeah, it's kind of mean. It's kind of mean. This is the situation, though. You know what I mean? So it's like I can't just do this all the time. I wait till Thanksgiving and it goes down. It must be really good then. It, that's what I'm saying. It's serious. Yeah. Like you want to like. I feel like you prepare all year for this. I don't really. No, Only like you, spiritually. You should just say that. Just be like, I prepare all year for this. Well, well I, this is psychological preparation. Well, you ain't got. Yeah. You know. I get ready for the harvest of the mac and cheese. Oh my god! It's a real thing. It's a like I need to try this mac and cheese now. You I know what I mean? I feel like I'm gonna eat it and then start being lightened and woke. Right. Like I'm <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's enlightening mac and cheese. It's just like woven into the cheese and everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just bite and then you just have new thoughts. You feel it's me? magic caffeine, mac yeah. and cheese. Magical mac. <laughs> All that good stuff. So you got a book in here. What you reading? Oh, yeah. Well, well, um, you know, uh, is that you? This is I. Yes, I don't, I don't uh -oh. read too so much, but you should. It's called Sleeper Cell. Okay. Yeah, Sleeper Cell. Don't sleep on a cell. By yours truly. And this is the book, uh, poetry. poetry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. By yours truly. Uh, my name is Quest. By the way, scribe called Quest. I'm gonna sit up here and talk about all this in just a second. See, so I'll get to dig on in. I got a show coming up next week. And I will tell you more about that. Awesome. I'm going to ask one question about the book, though. Uh, who did the graphic 
on the front cover because it's a dope. Oh, yes. I'm glad you asked that. This is the uh, amazing work of Ron Darren Radcliffe. Uh, go to my Facebook page, Michael Questmore. You're going to see the flyer for the show. is also Ron Darren Radcliffe. I love giving big ups to other artists in the city doing amazing things. Uh, Ron Darren is, you know, genius. Awesome. Absolutely. So, sleep yourself. Don't sleep on the cell. Come yeah. All right, and you got a turtle. Did you see this? Yeah, yeah. The turtle. Is that any? Is that symbolic for a personality trait, or is it something that you like? I just like it, but patience. <laughs> yeah, we, we can say that. All right. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah. I used to find owls. That's what I find a lot of. I love owls. Turtles yeah. are like the owls of the sea. You know I mean? <laughs> there you I go. Think they, yeah, they kind of go together. So I get yeah, that. I get that. It's, it's the wisdom, it's the, you know what I'm saying, take your time, young man, all that good stuff. <laughs> so how long have you been doing poetry? I've been doing poetry, uh, man, doing, doing it, like, for a minute. You're going to make me tell my age, about, like, 15 years or so. Okay. But I've been writing since I was a kid, so this is, like, a lifelong, you know, mission. Okay. So, and what's, um, your poetry is most inspired by? Um, life, life, you know what I'm saying? Uh, politics, life in the black body, you know? Um, the need to heal from, you know, stuff, particularly as, you know, the experience life in the black body. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. And can we get your thoughts on how do you feel about the Big Easy and its work ethic? ethic? So this is, you got to give me some context because I heard there's like a conversation going with this. I heard, I yes. heard some things, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm jumping into. So let me know. Well, DC Paul made a post about how he feels the city is full of talented people with medium-sized dreams, and they're lazy, basically, that's what he said. I remember that post. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he stepped into it on that <laughs> one. Um, I commend him for having the, the, the bravery to say what needs to be said, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we can definitely, and not even just on the work ethic, but just, like, all around. There's a lot of things we can mm -hmm. look at to sharpen and tighten up, you know what I'm saying? Things we can do for ourselves. Yeah. Um, in terms of just being more intentional about knowing what you're living in and how to address what you're living in, and, you know, respond to that. That said, um, you know, Lazy Fett and LeBron Tumulet, that's part of the culture, too. So that's a, that's a tough one right there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, there's a lot of layers and levels to that conversation. How do you keep yourself from falling into traps of not pushing yourself and not wanting to push yourself? How do you get your stuff done? What keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Um, looking at people doing it better than me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I look up and I say, okay, I sold a couple hundred books, that's cool. Uh, I still ain't got a college tour yet. I still haven't taken this to as many people as can partake of this as possible. Um, and back to the New Orleans thing, like, uh, there's amazing talent that comes out of the cities and there's amazing talent that stays in the city. So I know that I'll just want what I create here and what's inspired from here to just stay here. Uh, you know, what happens here, even if it's like right around the corner conversation, quite often that's a global is a global impact, you know what I'm saying? Um, our talents and the way that they fuse together, all of these things is always of such global significance because New Orleans is such a historical place. So I know that I want to share that story, so I got to get off my butt to do it. You know? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Appreciate you. Yeah. So you said that you're also inspired by politics, right? A little bit. I don't even know if I would say I'm inspired by politics. I'm but it's something that you. Like, Agitating. So yeah, the, the agitation that it caused me caused me to have to speak on it and agitate back. Okay. So yeah, um, and, and by politics I don't necessarily mean politicians. Mm -hmm. I mean the way that politicians' policies play out in the everyday, you know, world and in our community. So yeah. so it's time to go. It's time to go. All right, thanks for that talk. Jessica, did the whole interview. I'm like Oprah. We are back. Welcome back to the Miss Believe Radio Show, you guys. We're live on WBOK AM 1230. I'm DC Paul, the Millennial Arsenio, and who's this to my right? That actor guy, Martin Bats Brashford. And who's this to my left? Jay still keeping it real. And who that is in the booth? I said, who that is in the booth? You was conversating real hard with Darren Lindsay. You know <laughs> What um what were those last two two songs you played? Uh, the first one that they heard was called Superman. Mm -hmm. Beast, Beast. It's by Ayo Timmy. Ayo Timmy. So I, I believe that's a guy I met at the jazz market. 
Um, he plays guitar, and it was both of those songs were real by dope. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so shout out to Ayo Timmy. Um, this is our second interview segment here on the Misbelief on episode 36 of the Misbelief radio show. Um, we're here with the one, the only, a scribe called Quest. Yay! Yes, my, what are you doing? Find your ass. He's a make it organic. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. This is Quest. Second. Quest the second time here on the Miss Believe Radio Show, right? Second time, yep, absolutely. Yep. First we'll time we were talking about uh, taking down Nola. Yeah, um, and this is let's let's do a quick follow up um, since we haven't seen you since then, and as if the people don't already know um, how much know, progress. Really we talk, to, talk about the progress, man. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, history was made. That was a beautiful thing, you know. We uh, put some. Uh, Ripples out there. Um, the movement, as it stands, we're working on uh, our first um, international conference that's uh, tentatively going to be in March and um, inviting people up from uh, around the country, around the world. Uh, some folks I visited in the Caribbean this summer who we want to bring up who are doing some of the work there. So Yeah, I yeah. saw there were some taking downs in other cities. Yeah, man, it's taking down VA, it's mm -hmm. taking down, you know, North Carolina after the Charlottesville thing, that stuff is popping everywhere. It's a beautiful thing to see how, you know, we kind of lit a spark in our that flame. It's going yeah, a lot of places, you know, like New Orleans tends to do. There you go. Um, but yeah, we're working on that. And we, we're planning a party December 9th, tentatively, at the uh, gym uptown on Arado Street. Like a um, party party? Yeah, man, we never really, like, celebrated, like, the right way. Like, we did that time we had the, the, the march. Line, yeah. yeah, that, that wasn't supposed to be. That was, that wasn't that's supposed like, to be a celebration. Yeah, it it's was, like you was, fight man. the party at the same time. Yeah. It's like, man, I'm just want to party party. Like, yeah, right, celebrate the fact we, we, we live, we survived, we made this, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, like, we're still here to, you know, tell about it and teach about it. So, so speaking of that, man, you, you are a renaissance man. You got so many sides of you like we all do. So you got the, the serious activist side. You also like to party, but you're also a performer. Right, absolutely. Um, a, as well as an author and a teacher and a bunch of other stuff. But you got a show coming up. You about to like do a whole one man show? Yes, sir. So uh, next uh, Thursday through Sunday for the In French Fest, I'm uh -huh. doing my first one man show. Um, about an hour long set of poetry, a little bit of music in there, uh, potentially some um, visuals, multimedia. Um, it's all based on this book right here. Sleeper uh, Cell? Yeah, Sleeper Cell. Don't sleep on the cell. Mm -hmm. um, this, I remember I hosted, a, you had a, 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 was it a release for that? At that's Oscar? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've done a lot of readings and releases for it, but um, I'm always trying to expand the platform and the conversation around it. This is basically uh, the soundtrack to a lot of the work I've done in the last couple of years. So if you think about, um, you know, organizing and everything we do with Taking Down NOLA, um, you know, I believe that the, the, the work came out of these words, you feel me? So I want to give these words to the people. Um, it's everything that I have in terms of my conversation around what led me to doing that work. I feel that, man. So um, next Thursday through Sunday as part of in French Fest, where at? Um, Marsha Maynard is the name of the venue. It's 1000 North Rampart Street. It's, uh, it's reopening or open for the first time. It's right there, not too far from Esplanade. But follow me on, you know, the social media and all of that, course. you know. And, but uh, tell people you know, where they can too. follow you. If people who was listening to the last show, did you drop it for them? But drop it for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, a scribe called Quest on Instagram, Quest Scribe on Twitter, mm -hmm. and Michael Questmore on Facebook. Nice, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing like you in full performance artist mode. Even though I know like it's just gonna be a heavy social activism thing in it. I'm sure, but like, um, Absolutely. but I, I feel like it'll still be entertaining. I'm talking about doing multimedia music. Are you? Are you gonna you be saying something? Like, are you, are you uh, yeah, I, I might drop a, a couple really? notes on them, but it, yeah. Okay. yeah. What, what I mean by that is, uh, I got two violinists, amazing violinists. I've done similar shows with them in the past. Nice. Um, free. Uh, she's actually on tour right now, so she won't be there, but she's gonna record me tomorrow. And uh, Denise Frazier. So um, yeah, it'll be that and. Um, yeah, you know, I might drop a little, little, little sonic. I bet I heard that. All right, so you've been doing some, um, some uh, promotional work for that, um, like you had the, uh, the, the photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, that photo shoot was like really powerful. It was just a still frame of us standing in front of uh, Andrew Jackson with nooses mm -hmm. in our. Where it used to be. No, 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 no. Andrew Jackson's still there. I thought y'all went to uh, Lee. Yeah, nah, we didn't go to Lee. We okay. Lee. Yeah. No, no, y'all had nooses in your hands. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen these yet. Y'all put this out? Yeah, that's on my um, social media. It's on the, uh, you know, um, it's my cover photo, something like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then you, uh, there was also like a, a video project you guys, um, or, or is it out yet? Or are, you, are you still working on it? The, um, 
with with all of us recording. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We go. We're gonna hold that off to the next time. I mean, this oh, is man. the first iteration of this, so this is not gonna be the last time I do this show. I'm, okay. I'm creating something that you know I hope will travel. And I hope will keep people engaged in the work. So you know, come around spring. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, I'm looking forward to seeing that because uh, if I can, if I can talk about it a little bit. Yeah, go for it. Mind, uh, you you had asked a bunch of different people to record themselves reciting or reading um, your piece. I don't know what the name of it is. It's but called that, Post Racial America: a Children's Story. I, I've heard. Yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah. It needs it. In fact, I'm actually to do that for the Facebook Live when we go on break. Um, okay. Is, is mine doing that one? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Okay. That one's kind of um, it's intense. You I know. know. What I'm saying? I and y'all can also check the video out for that. That's uh, all that stuff is gonna be in the event page. Um, my website is forthcoming. We shot the video at Exhibit B a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Really powerful video. Mm -hmm. The B roll is showing a lot of the um footage of the kind of people we're talking about when we're talking about state sanctioned violence and all of that. But, um, if you don't want to do that one with Facebook, like you do something that's a little more lighthearted. But that is yeah. a very powerful piece, and you had a bunch of different people record themselves. Like I, I did one. Um, oh, you did one? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I just, okay. I just got recorded for me. Um, yeah. I had a dope background and everything, and um, I saw you perform it the, the Thursday before that at the Corner Collective. That's right. Yeah. Um, so like, uh, I can't say I. I definitely was inspired. I wouldn't even try to match your intensity, but no, like I wanted y'all um, to do it y'all way. Yeah, exactly. I and, gotta see that, man. And I, I was interested in seeing like how everybody did it their way. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know all the different because it was gonna be edited. A lot of people doing it together, right? Yeah, like splicing it up and making mm -hmm. this. You know, the, the poem goes: We need to have a conversation about race, as you know. And mm -hmm. then it, you know, bang, bang, turns page, yada, yada, yada. But I wanted to see everybody's take on that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like what the what kind of energy you gonna bring to that? So, you know, um, everybody, you know, is going to handle it a different way. True. Yeah, man. That's why I was like, man, I want to see, because uh, India, India, who is the co-creative misbelief, uh, mm -hmm. was working as a project manager, or the, the I guess. Yeah, production manager. Production she's, manager. she's been uh, helping out a little bit. Yeah, yeah she was the one, uh, she was the, the, the contact person for, for the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I called her, and she was like, surprisingly, all of our elders had submitted videos before all of the, the young people. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, she was, yeah. Oh, wow. and then, yeah, I went to Jerry Ward's house to have him record it. That was a lot of fun. Is that the one I recorded where she said somebody held a book and actually turned the page when you yeah, said the turn page? You know, Jerry, like, that's yeah, that's why I'm like, I want to see everybody's interpretation of that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I did my, I tried, I did my own, you know what I'm saying? I gotta but, see it, man. I gotta see it. You see Paul version of this shit. Because you got, you got jokes and stuff. I don't, I don't oh, know. Man, no. Oh, man. Oh, man. So I, I gotta see how that, that blends. Our last guest, Derek Lindsay, reminded me that I don't do enough serious acting. So, yeah, man, I, I didn't bring no jokes to it. I, I, I tried to. No, I know you got chops. I know you got chops. Yeah, I know you got chops. I came out. Just that's how intense it was. You made a little third out right there. It's not a thing. I got you. It's burning. It's the whole tap side. Whole tap side. <laughs> is there anything that you learned about yourself for like, you know, that was a challenge in doing this one man show though? Because that can be a, a heavy ordeal. Mm -hmm. I'm learning it now. Like, yeah. As we speak. You know what I'm saying? Um and to be like transparent with you, like I've done enough features and shows that this doesn't feel like a big stretch. But the difficulty and the challenge of this, as y'all know, is like artists and collaborative artists is bringing a lot of people in the room because it's like organizing all over again. Mm -hmm. I'm getting back to the artistry because um, you know, they, they are flip sides of the same coin for me. That's how I came into poetry where, you know, people that were activists and poets at the same time taught it to me, you know. Um, be it doing all your goal, the last poet is like my first teacher, you know what I'm saying? So I don't see them as being separate, but I do understand that when I'm doing organizing, like, it's a thing to mm -hmm. be like calling everybody, mm -hmm. emailing everybody, yada, 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 get all those people in the room. Tell me about Whereas it. if you just ask me to show up to a room and do support shit, that's, that's wonderful. That's right. a gift because, like, you're going to bring the people there and all I got to do is spill and be me. Right. You know what I mean? But, like, coordinating a thing. So it's not something I haven't done before. I think um, maybe with art, though, like, you are way more, um, you know, I need creative control. Yeah, I need yeah. to know because the word got to land like this, and this thing got to have like because mm -hmm. that's your vision. It's different from like the Vice Theater and the stuff we've done in the past. Where you know, let me just throw my little piece in the gumbo mm -hmm. pot and I feel great. Mm -hmm. right. But if I know that I'm the architect of mm -hmm. a certain project, right. like things need to line up with that vision because otherwise it's not their vision. I feel like I, I feel that way off because uh, like different things I do because I most times I direct, I write, I act, and I'll be like, hey, what you what are you hiring me for? If I'm just here to be the actor, I'm just here to be the actor. But it's different when it's time I'm the director yeah, now. Creator. I'm the creator. Yeah. It's coming from me. It's all on my shoulders, you feel me? As well as, yeah, I just I just know just that side. I wasn't even thinking about the coordinating side of it. I'm thinking about just the creative side of, dude, it's a whole hour or so as you on stage. Yeah. And boom, I already know that. That's his own uh, amount of energy that you got to yeah. put towards it. But then when you throw that into it, it's like, dude, yeah. hell yeah. 
Yeah, it's a beast, and that's why like I definitely want to get this out as it is now because it gets easier as you go along. Mm -hmm. But this first one is just like the whole the management piece. That's the hardest part. Give me a stage, any stage, I'm going to be the same guy, and I'm right. going to have fun doing mm -hmm. it. But um, even if it's heavy stuff, I mean, that's, that's part of my, my venting, my healing, like that feels good. But right. if I got to do that, and I got to keep up with this email mm -hmm. list, and yes, this Google yes. Doc, and these people got to call like, right. oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Eddie Mac, man. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I about to say? Oh, I'm terrified of doing a one man show. I am, man. Like, yeah. shout out to you for that. That takes. I am. It takes a lot of valor. Yeah, I don't even want to do a thirty minute comedy set, honestly. Let alone like just being on stage for one hour by That's myself. Crazy. I'm terrified. Yeah. All right. So, how are you balancing? You know, having creative control and staying focused since you are doing a one man show and having to do like the business, you know, organi organizational side of it too. Like, yeah, um, first and foremost, I'm, I'm surprised you would say that because if there's anything that's taught me like what stage fright looks like, it's like trying to host or be a comedian. Mm -hmm. First of all, like whatever is funny to me is funny to me and a couple people in that room. Like I wouldn't try to take a whole moment. Like what you do is like brilliant. I was talking to Peter about it. Like you got jokes like we got bars, but people ain't coming to hear bars for an hour like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I don't know, I'm just stepping out in faith and... Um, there's a lot of things that taught me just uh, what that feels like, period, you know? Um, and the, the, the ritual of stepping up in front of a crowd of strangers, and for me, even more so when it's people you know, um, and sharing your truth can be terrifying regardless. So having done that for over a decade, like, that's got me to a level where I feel like, okay, my whole conversation needs to be had, though. I can't go do no, you know, 20-minute speech. Uh, I, that's cool, too. I definitely can but I got like a whole thing that I want people to engage. It's like a meal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is so. in French Fest, right? Uh, the festival starts on Thursday? Uh, I think Wednesday. Yeah, the 15th to the 19th. I, I wish you could answer this, but what's going on with the French Fest? Like, who was who your, who is it? Was it Michael Martin? It's Michael okay. Martin. And the old, this is not French Fest, to be sure. In, in French. French. So right, right, it's, it's important, like, uh, we probably all did French Fest stuff before, but what this is. In French, too. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if I did in French. It's only like the second well, year, I did right? In French, but. Yeah, and that's, that's the, the bastard child of French Fest. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. So the, the organizers for French Fest moved to like Oklahoma or Kentucky mm -hmm. or something, right? So, and they didn't want to give up the name or, or something like that. Yeah, that's, but more important than like, that is just like the um, the organization itself, like they had borne out like 40 some odd shows be coming in. People come from everywhere. This is a much smaller little piece. And so the promotion is not happening the way it would have happened before where you could almost be sure you know, people going to be mm -hmm. in their rooms. Plus, you got new venues. My venue is a new venue. So, even though this is the first iteration, in my opinion, like a rough draft, I'm completely confident. Y'all coming out, come check it out. I'm going to give y'all everything. I'm going to give y'all my heart like I always do as a poet, as an artist. The other pieces of the show, they're going to be straight too. They're going to be better by spring. I can tell you right now. Transparency okay. moment. That said, uh, I'm still going to promote it out the wazoo because... Um, you know... You're still uh, giving us a show. It's still giving y'all a show. And I'm, and I'm still... Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm knowing that that's not necessarily going to happen by way of that infrastructure because they don't have all that, you know. But um, going forward, this will be your this will be your your one man show that you can take and 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 travel with and grow. Yeah, yeah and grow. Most important, this is the birth of a thing. You and anybody I mean? who's seen you, anybody who's seen a scrap club quest on stage, you know he's captivating. You know, if you see him for five minutes, um, you're gonna be all into that. So I can imagine what you're gonna do for over an hour, man. I'm gonna try to make it up Thursday through Sunday, right? Yeah, nine o'clock and uh, nine o'clock Thursday and Friday, seven o'clock Friday and uh, Saturday and Sunday. Seven o'clock p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And that's one thousand one. One thousand uh, North Rampart. One thousand North, North Rampart, close to Rampart and Esplanade, right? But follow Scribe Call Quest where? Instagram, a Scribe Call Quest, Facebook, Michael Quest Moore, Twitter, Quest Scribe at Quest Scribe. Yeah, and support him. This is what's is it the name of the Sleeper Cell, the name of your show? Yeah, Sleeper Cell, a uh, stage performance based on the book. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out again, man. At any other time, you know you're welcome, man. You're Absolutely. Thank you all for family. having me. Uh, we're going to take one more break. Hey, Matt Smile, when we come back from this break, we're going to talk about what's going on out here. I got some things to talk about. <laughs> uh, what you got, Matt Smile? What's, what's, what's queued up? Oh, hey, oh. Sun Cutter was here a couple weeks ago, man. Shouts out. Um, and can I make a request? Can we, at, at least sometimes this episode, can I hit the tank of the bangers? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I told you, man. Stay tuned. Stay tuned to the Nigga Lee Radio Show, y'all. And don't get nothing on me. Not a drop. Thank you. What's the name of the venue again? Uh, Marshall Rainer. Marshall Rainer.
Thursday, Friday, 9 o'clock. Um, Thursday, Friday, 9 o'clock. Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Follow me, Michael Questmore, Facebook. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, you out here, man? You get a picture for me, Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. This is going to be great, DC. Would you, would you take it for us? Yeah, yeah, man. Just kidding. Oh, I forgot about the performance. That's yes, what we're supposed to be right doing now. right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did forget that, man. That's a trip. Cool, cool, cool. Man, shame on me. That's all good. Come on, come on. What a mindset, folks. All right, so, um, so, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't need no intro, huh? Uh, nah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Crab Call Quest. All right. Uh, this piece is going to be in the play, uh, the one, not the play, the, the one-man show, uh, this Thursday through Sunday coming up, Marsha Maynard, uh, Thursday and Friday, 9 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, uh, 7 p.m. Gentrification in five parts. A play on the senses. What smells like lemon pledge and bologna mixed with a dash of gutter punk funk? Sounds like a churning coffee bean grinder set to a backdrop of new construction. Can't tell the difference between the grind outside and the grind inside. Sounds like number nine. Your cappuccino, vanilla, woke up and says on a cypress hill, I'd say it's done. And... Sorry, man, but we don't have any vacancies for occupants of three or more. Looks like a boarded-up home in disrepair next to a newly refurbished one. Fresh coat of paint still glistening. Looks like a rigid white girl's jawbones and her pet pit bulls snarl like a band of scraggly-headed hopefuls riding bikes ten feet in the air past a wrinkled old brown woman on her post. Looks like the look in that woman's eyes would have swore she'd just seen an alien ship. Looks like the look the hopefuls on bikes never give if the word aloof could campaign for a picture in a dictionary. We'll put a Nikon 360 camera on those kids. Tastes like nothing, yet somehow still familiar. Like your mama's favorite dish, but she forgot all the seasoning, you know. Or too much everything never asked for, and when you got it, ain't even much applied to you. Like, cappuccino for the woke up and on a cypress hill, I'd say, with a side of kale. Feels like an eerie sense of something ain't quite right, but how do I put my finger on it when it keeps slipping from my grasp? How I identify what keeps disappearing like a floorboard slipped from beneath your feet. Then the whole room, then the whole house, then all of a sudden, brand new floorboard, brand new house, but no more. You. Feels like a slow burn and only melts all your skin off ten years after the fact, like colonization in a velvet glove. Like, I think I'm getting fucked, but I'm not quite sure. Feels like never getting a cup in the kitchen when company comes. Like, been working in the kitchen my whole life, and they just up and hired a whole new staff. Out the blue, just like that. Told my recipes ain't good enough here no more. Told me the rest of my patients don't like my ingredients. Instead of putting cappuccino, blue, over on the cypress cell, I take with a side of kale enough. Told me they got some new cooks now. But I could always go apply the shot brown the corner. Only... Oh, no shot round the corner told me. Nice job, enemy. Uncle Ben, we sure do appreciate your service. Just so happens it's not needed around here anymore, but leave your kids. Your kids can stay. We've got a nice shiny new building to teach them in where they can learn all about our predecessors like Marco Polo and Christopher Columbus. So one day, when they grow up, they may not always know when we're going to show up, but they'll always, 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 when we get here. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Feel that through the camera. That was dope, man. Thank you so much. Man. 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 Check him out. Sleep on the sleep on the cell. This Thursday through Sunday. Thursday and Friday, 9 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 7 p.m. Marsha Maynard, 1000 North Rampart Street. Folly boy, Michael Quest. More much love. Thank man. you. Thank you. Thank you.
So, plus, I just read that you're from New York. When did you move to New Orleans? Uh, 1993. Okay. I'm not a millennial. I'm just cut my two years. <laughs> we'll edit that out. We'll edit that out. You're an honorary millennial. You're an honorary millennial. He said that on our show. He made it clear he wasn't one of us. Damn, why y'all got to do that? See what y'all do when y'all do that, bro? Everybody knows I'm old. Like, for real, like, there's a cut. Because you keep saying the year that millennials qualify as. And if I'm not one, tell me, no, I felt play. I was telling this to my dude earlier, man. I'm teaching these kids, man. They like was doing this game where you gotta like you do these body movements and then you say what it is. So if you punch and they punch, you kick, you kick. So this one girl started doing the fucking running man. So I was like, oh, running man. Yeah. And then this kid went, that's not the running man. I was like, what you mean? This girl said, oh no, that's the old running man. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, the running man ain't even the running man. No I got that one last year. Like, 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 no, that's not the right. That's, that's what they did. Running 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 that's what they call it. 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 Yeah, they better give it a different name, though. Don't tell me the running man ain't the running man. Stop it, stop it. Don't get none on you. Appreciate you, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yes, please. That's what I'm screaming at. That's how I see shit. You're fucking creepy, man. Yeah, man. Oh, no, baby, baby. Don't you think follow you? I thought that was funny. I was just like, when is he gonna turn around? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Watching back um, some of the old Facebook live videos mm -hmm. and the trailer, I realized I was so bold. Remember that, Brian? And I always had a drink in my hand. In the yeah. trailer, I'm cursing and I'm drinking so much. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's not that's not who I am all the time. I mean, that's who I am. Just sometimes. Just, yeah. So I'm just a I've part been of you. Making the effort to be less less bold. You know, I ain't got to ain't always got to be about to the fucking. You know what I mean? Although that is important. Titty fucking is, titty I mean, fucking is so important. You know, because <laughs> representation matters. Yes. And does. um Titty fucking enthusiasts uh, they need, they need a voice, a platform, you know. Um Martin Martin is a Titty Crumb enthusiast. I don't know if you guys uh, you ever uh, check out his Facebook status right after the Miss Lee radio show. Always something about Titty Crumbs. And I'm like, how why titty crumb this important to you? And I felt like I was titty crumb shaming, and I don't want to, I don't want to judge yeah, you can't titty do crumb that. shame. So Martin, what, what, what is this infatuation you have with titty crumbs, man? All I'ma say is, all right, quest baby, log out of your Facebook accounts. Yeah, man. That's all I'ma say on that. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, Ten seconds. <laughs> what up, Mama Sherry? <laughs> Who you think you fool, boy? To sing my What's happening, yo? Welcome back to the Miss Believe Radio Show, live on WBOK AM 1230. Or you're listening to the podcast, or you're watching the Facebook Live video, or you're watching us on YouTube because the Miss Believe is all over the internet. The misbelief one word, man. Follow us wherever you like to watch and listen to things. Just follow us. We're there. Um, by the way, I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arsenio. Um, and who's this to my right? It's Jay Steele, keeping it real. What up, Jay Steele? Hey, what's up? Chilling. And who this is to my left? That actor guy, Martin Bass Bradford. What's up? Bass. Cool and cool and daily, you know? And who that is in the pool? It's your boy, Master Mike. What's going on? What up with you, Master Mike? Not much. You just played three songs, huh? Yes, I did. What you played? 
Well, the one you just heard was already known by Jay Z, mm-hmm. and the one before that was uh, Views by Love the Artist. Oh, Love the Artist. And before that, you had quotation marks by Slim Cut. By Slim Cut. All right. Dope. Well, you know, uh, this here is one of our favorite segments here on the Middle East Radio Show. What's going on out here? What's going on out here? You hear me? Yeah. So we talk about local talking points, uh, news topics, events, things that are happening, going on around the city, going on out here, as you say. Yep. Um, WBOK has a what's going on out here. What are you talking about? Monday, the 13th, uh, 6.30 p.m. at Kermit Ruffin's Mother-in-Law Lounge in Treme. Um, we're mm-hmm. celebrating our 10th anniversary. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, so I, I, Urban is probably going to be there, Urban Mayfield. I'm just assuming. So, um, But the Miss Belief Punch will be there. I believe they'll be serving it for free. So Ooh. check them out at 630. If you ever had my Miss Belief Punch, um, then you know you want to go where they're serving it for free. Um, but go celebrate the 10th anniversary uh, badge of WBOK. I don't know what they're celebrating 10 years of, honestly. Is it 10 years of real talk, real time? I know the station is way older than 10 years. Yeah, I was about to say, like, 10 years. Like, WBOK has been around way longer than that. It says 10 years of uh, real talk, real time. Of celebrating 10 years of real talk. Um, Mm. We should find out some more about that. Is that like a a post-Katrina? No? I don't know. Maybe? You're going to make me Google it. That might be, you know? Um, I mean, the world kind of did restart after Katrina. This is true, this is true. That, that's 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 a fair view. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Um, I know what else is going on out here. No, no, Latours is working like a dog, man. They um, he's got this special running for the uh, for the homecoming weeks. Uh, if you went to one of the Asian to well, either Dillard or Xavier in New Orleans, uh, they're doing these tours. Um, if you're in town for the homecoming, No No Latours has some specials. Um, for the alumni, so uh, that's that's what's going on, man. My homie Malik from No No Tours just walked into the station with this food, though. He, I he know, had, it he had a poor so boy. Good. He, he got mayonnaise right him on the left corner of oh your lip. God. He thought I wasn't gonna print him up. Boy, what I'm kind so of, of poor boy is it? How size is it? What is that? Roast beef. Oh, from oh. Raise on the Ave. Oh, shout out to Raise on the Ave. I know really? what's on that Jamaica really That's that's turkey. Um, shrimp I and that uh, and uh, the Creole sauce on it. Yeah, oh. yeah, oh, put the rice on the man. Ham, man. And he bites into a pickle <laughs> just to throw it in our faces. <laughs> I love Malik. So that's what's going on out here. Jay Still. Lord. Yeah, we're talking about Po' Boys. Po' Boy Fest is actually tomorrow on Oak Street. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> it sure um, is. Typically, it's a free festival, but now apparently you have to buy a $5 wristband to even be able to buy food. Oh, wow. You got to pay to get in. And yeah, but they're the still world. selling it as a free festival, so... Oh, it's a suggested donation to get in? Is that what No, you like, you, you... On Oak Street? It's open. It's an open festival. <clears throat> but, like, in order to buy anything from the stands, you have to have this wristband on that costs $5. Oh, okay. So you could you could just go and enjoy the music um, right. and the atmosphere. So it's a free festival, but, I mean, you still have to pay a fee to pay for it. They're trying it. Yeah, they're trying, <laughs> they're trying it. it. You know, they're testing some stuff out because it is a super packed festival. But if you do go... They're trying to make, get that money any way they can, huh? So you got to... Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's what's going on out here. I don't. I don't know if I'm be going to that. I don't know either. It, it is ten festivals happening in New Orleans this weekend. I mean, we live in New Orleans, man. If I just want a po' boy, I could just go get a po' boy exactly. from so many different places. I mean, Ray's on the app is black only, right there on Saint Bernard. Malik walked his ass in here with the trim made brass. I know, po'boy. smelling all good. That has turkey, grilled shrimp. And uh, I believe Asian and face on, on that thing, right? They need so, to make a commercial starring him because the way he's selling it to us, every time we look over right. at him, he's, he's so just like, happy. Mm, yeah. He's so happy. Oh. He's so happy. Oh. He's so happy. Mm-hmm. He's so happy. <laughs> I'm going to eat a fry, not the, not the sandwich, just so you can feel a little better, but yeah. not. So I guess the Oak Street Poor Boy Fest is what's going on out here this weekend. Bass, what you got? What's going on out here, man? A movie inspired by the Negro Motorist Green Book to film in New Orleans. Yeah, I read about that. Who was that, Geneva? As half of the Ferrelli Brothers directing team, Peter Ferrelli has come through. Yeah, Geneva tag us both in that. Mm-hmm. But I got tagged a few times in that joint because I'm just happy that they got movies shooting here. And Mahershala Ali, who I look up to, is one of them actors getting in the game, you feel me? He's a part of it. So apparently it's about, it's a true story, of, it's a true story in 1962 where this black concert pianist named Don Shirley had a tour of the South. And he was afraid 
And so he went down to the Copacabana, hired the toughest bouncer there was, played by Beagle Mortensen. So Don Shirley was played by, played by Mahershala Ali. So he, got Beagle, so he gets Beagle Mortensen to drive him through the spot. It's these two guys on the road for three months during the South and all kind of stuff they get into. It's like a road trip. Um, wait, I think I... Wait. One point I want to uh, throw in there. The film takes its title from a guidebook published annually between 1936 and 1966 called The Negro Motorist Green Book, which listed businesses, restaurants, hotels, nightclubs, service stations, and the like that served black customers. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, this is an important joint. They're shooting that thing in New Orleans. So, you know. That's what's up. That's, you know, Viggo Mortensen, Herschel Ali, you know, that's, that's, that's big dog. It's big dog, so, you know. Dope, so we're bringing these films back to, back to Louisiana and more importantly to New Orleans. Right. That's what's going on out here. And I might be in that. You might? I might be in that. Really? We, see, we shall see. Yeah, <laughs> we shall see. Okay. I got I got a hit back about it, but it's like you know what I mean it's not over till it's over type stuff. Yeah, and I be I like, know you know what I mean. But like I didn't like I was telling this to Devin earlier. I pulled this uh, this story because Geneva Pataglia's in it. So I was like, uh -huh. what's going on now, this and that. And then like I got the audition for something called Green Book, and I ain't even put it together. And then I had to do the audition. Then it hit me back, and then they said a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh. Okay, this is the same thing I was already gonna talk about. So you know, nice. let's that's, see. That's a, that's a, that's really what's going on out here, dude. Like, yeah, dope, man. Get this work. So I, I see that we got a caller. It better not be on soon again. No, <laughs> we don't have. Oh, that's all exciting. Them people say, look, wait, you gonna wait, get, wait. you gonna read us, read us right. About? The poor boy. About, about the poor boy fest. So oh, it's, says, so it's, so it's a, it's a five dollar ticket. Yeah, I think there's like some kind of five dollar ticket. So it's, so you gotta pay to get in. It's cheap because Jay Steele was saying you gotta pay to get, saw, um, you gotta pay in order to buy. Yeah, it's a wristband in order to get the sandwiches. Who was that that called? Was it a reputable source? Tell them to call back. Tell them to call back. Yeah, tell them to call, call us back. back they, they, they better Google it. We're confused. Call back. We need clarification. Yeah, we want to know. Is that them right there? Okay, well, we're going to talk until that, that, that's them right there. Um, I got it. what's going on out here, man. So right yes, after uh, this show at 14 Parishes, um, my homegirl, Geneva Joy of Black Girl Giggles, is hosting uh, a watch party for uh, oh, Tiffany yeah, Haddish, hosting SNL. Tonight. We're going to come right right back to that, that topic because of the caller. What's up, caller? What you got? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Yeah. Well, now, y'all going to have feedback from y'all in, but on my end, I can hear y'all good. All right. <laughs> 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 Oak Street, the, the five-hour festival of things mm -hmm. that have been down, where one person can buy a, a wristband and all the whole group can stand and wait for him to oh. pick up at the same time. Gotcha. So, you know, they try to break the lines down where everybody will have to get in the line and get that thing and cut the line. Ain't no cut line. Just you got the money, you order as many things as you want, as long as your people are there to grab it and keep on going. Okay. Uh, that's mostly for the bands and stuff. That's gotcha. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, well, thank you. What's, what's your name, by the way? Juice just worked over there at WBOK. It is going home uh, today, yes? Oh. All right. All right. What's your name, by the way? Thank you so much Thank for calling, so Miss Cheryl. Oh, that's uptown. Oh, shout out. Hey. Thank you for calling, Miss Cheryl. Thank you. Bye. I love that we get callers. By the way, 504-260-9265, if you want to call and respond to anything we've said or just talk to us. Uh, if, you could, if you want to tell us what's going on out here, we take that. Um, I was... Talking about, uh, so after this show at 14 Parishes, which is on Clio Street, uh, 1638 Clio Street, I believe is the address. But um, so Tiffany Haddish is hosting SNL uh, tonight, mm -hmm. and she will be the first black female comedian to host SNL, which really that shocked me. That is crazy. Shocked me. Like, when I heard that, I really went through my mind and was trying to recollect, like, wait, 
there has to be another female actress. Well, I was like Whoopi Goldberg right? and never hosted, even, and not right. even and not even her as a comedian. Because I mean, if she hosted it, that would count as having a few black female comedian hosting it. But like, right. does she not qualify as, to host it as a? She after she's hosted. She's right. the EGOT. Academy Awards, she's the EGOT. You know? right. Right. She's she's so much. How can you not have? I'm just shocked that yeah, they had shocking. had um, at least. Whoopi Goldberg is a black female comedian host SNL. And, and for right. people out there who don't know, E got me. She won the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, and the Tony. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That's big level stuff to say that she's been in like DC, been in the game, and hasn't been at least invited on. Yeah, right. and she lives in New York City. That's like, ain't that her? Yeah. She's so NYC. Yeah. So yeah, that was shocking. But tonight, Tiffany Haddish is hosting SNL. And um, Black Girl Giggles, we had one of them here a few weeks ago. Um, that's the all black female comedy troupe here in the city. And they're hosting a watch party. Um, for this episode of SNL, it's uh, Doors at 9. The show comes on. It's from 10.30 to midnight, mm-hmm. um, uh, Central Standard Time. Um, but right before that, there'll be some um, some uh, comedians performing. Hopefully, it's the Black Girl Giggle Squad, because uh, Ashley Branch is funny. Um, Camille Rowan is funny. And Geneva Joy it's is hilarious. so hilarious. She's so funny. Um, man, oh my God. she is. She, I, I wish I was as funny as Geneva. Mm-hmm. Geneva's so funny that she'll be opening for Tiffany Haddish. Uh, this Wednesday at oh. um, at Dillard University. D- all right. Okay. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Chill out with all that. D D D D D D. Yup. Shout out to whatever the mascot is, but I know whatever um, it is. But they, oh, everybody uh, know about the blue devil. But can you tell me right quick what's Xavier's mascot? Don't the do this. Don't. Thank you. Don't let me the down. You never let me down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But so uh, Dillard's homecoming is this upcoming week, and then or oh, I guess there's a comedy show at the. University on Wednesday, um, and my baby Geneva Joy is going to be uh, hosting and opening up for Tiffany Haddish, who is currently oh, is so currently good. comedy's it girl. girl. Um, she is, she is and everything. Geneva and Joy is soon to be yeah, comedy's uh, it girl. Yeah, Geneva speaks. Joy deserves it so much, man. She's so funny. She claims she just started comedy when she moved to New Orleans about two years ago, but the girl is funny. So funny, um, mm-hmm. beyond her years of experience. So, um, yeah, I wish I could go to that. I'm, I got Wednesday night gigs, but um, it's oh, it's free to students. It is open to the public. Um, so check out check out Geneva Joy and Tiffany Haddish this Thursday at DU. Uh, and that's what's going on out here. Hmm. You got one mastermind? What's going on out here, bro? Uh, are any of you guys going to go to the Battle of Bands with Mike Classic? No. No. I'm probably not going to be in town for it. Mm. I got a... Um, I got uh, uh, performing the Friday of uh, Body Classic. Um, I guess that's what's going on out here too. Give me a moment, I'll find those details. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, are you going? No, I'm probably not. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I, ne- I never go. I have chosen for years to purposely not go to any Oh, wow, that's event. deep. I'm usually be salty because I always try to do other things outside of that around my birthday, which felt, and I'm always salty because I'm like, like it, it never works out because of Bayou Classic. So, no, yeah. You going? Oh, I'm going to the band. I know he's going. Yeah, we have. Yeah, Malik be out here. For me, it's one of those things where it's like I went to him every year from like middle school on up. For so I for so many years, I used to go up every year. We used to always go to battle bands and the Bayou Classic. So at, at this point, I'm just like, yeah. Again, every year. Mm-hmm. The dancing dogs. Yeah. I feel you. No, I understand. I understand the hype, though. Everybody, like you said, it's like it's black excellence. It's like you know, it's black colleges. It's just you know, black. You feel right. me? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. By the way, Malik, I just want to say I can smell that poor boy on your breath uh, through the microphone I all the way on, in, in this side of the booth. So, Ridiculous. Um, thank you for that. So you're yeah. glowing, Malik. You're glowing. <laughs> Speaking of Ooh, uh, that Bayou Classic weekend, so that um, that Friday, the twenty fourth, I believe, um, I'm I'm performing comedy at Whispers on the Lake in New Orleans East. I've been scared to perform in the East for a long time. I ain't gonna lie to you. Nice. you it's too black. black. Not because just I, I just because I know you I'm an East Beast. Yeah, bro. I'm an East Beast, and I just I just felt like my my audience was elsewhere. But my first time, I'll be doing the show at three for one Fridays, Black Friday edition. 
Um, three for one Friday. Oh yeah, because right, because from five thirty to eight is a free soul food buffet. Mm. Uh-huh. And they have good food too. At Whispers, yeah, yes. they, they used to be um, dish. dish. Oh um, my god, mm-hmm, they drive the food. So and then good. from nine to eleven is the comedy show, and then from eleven until is uh, the after party. So um, it's a, that's a three for one. And um, yeah, Mark Cheese is headlining. Shout out, um, shout out to Mark Cheese. He took me on tour with him. Uh, and oh, big up to Mark Cheese. He had my favorite quote of the week. When we said, like Issa Rae said, uh, uh, "I'm yeah. rooting for everybody black." He had that tweet. I'm rooting for for everybody from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. Shout out to Mark Cheese. And shout out to all the working people in the city, man. So there's Mark Cheese headlining. Um, myself and Nonsense opening up for him. Hosted by uh, comedian Brady. Brady is funny. He's a brilliant idiot. That's his his tagline. Um, and it's kind of true, he's stupid. Um, but then he came to the jazz up one time and grabbed the drumsticks. And I was like, I'm telling you, you stupid, like this, and you can get in the pocket. And he, yeah, he, <laughs> he killed it. Yep, he did, so, surprisingly. Yep, so I'm gonna have Brady on the show. He's been talking about it. That's what's going on out here, me doing comedy, because nobody knows mm-hmm. I'm an actor. Um, <laughs> back to you, Jay Still. I know you're an actor, it's okay. Deborah and Lindsay made me realize I need to do some more. I'm about to give you another reason to not like the West Bank, though. Um, <laughs> As if I needed that. <laughs> oh, man, she's about to take mine from me. What you uh, got? Go ahead. Ahead. Thousands of West Bank residents were without Our power. Oh, electricity. <laughs> late Thursday night and most of Friday. Do you know why? Yeah, I know why. <laughs> do you really? I do. Oh, okay. He keeps up with all shade of the West Bank. <laughs> Please. <love it. laughs> I love you because apparently the drunk driver. <laughs> Drove into one of the energy substations mm-hmm. and was well above the legal limit of alcohol and whatever else was in his system. I mean, I feel yep. like I feel like with this story, I'm actually not that mad. And there's energy. a joke there. And how many how many thousands of people were without power and for how long? I, I was counting like the hours. Twenty five thousand. I had my I had my wall clock plugged in at my house and I was like, <laughs> how many hours the West Bank going without power now? Twenty five thousand and then by Friday they had it restored to like. Most of them, but they still had 500 people in the dark. I thought people this one person. was in the dark on the West Bank anyway. Oh, boy. I mean, they usually ah, are. I got the bell. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what we're going that's what, that's what happened out here. Um, oh, so Asian what you got, Malik? Malik, what, what, what's going on out here? Don't say that. Bro. It was a joke. That's part eight. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, as, as, as above, so below, right? But it's called, it was called As Above, So Below. Uh-huh. It's one of my favorite poems, too. His artwork was just on point. He hired Photo Silk, who is like a street photographer, that's been doing block parties and stuff for like years. He has pictures of Soldier Slim, Juvenile, from Wild Black. He hired Photo Silk. And also, Melon announced that he will be releasing a photography book in 2018. Awesome. Dope, dope. Yes, yeah, indeed, man. And I do Patrick Mellon. Shout out to him. He I feel like hard. he's everywhere. Yeah, man. He everywhere. Works hard. Dude. We had him take a uh, a picture with my um with my cell phone one time. I felt so honored. Like he, me and Nick Nick Smith gave him my cell phone. I was like, would you take a picture? And he looked at it like, I, I don't I don't do this, but all right. And, yes. and he did it, and it was amazing. <laughs> No, we need no, to. We should. And we he should. a McMahon right. cat, dude. He is right. A man. What's so funny is he thought I was. I thought he was older than me. He thought I was younger than him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Patrick was a couple behind me. Yeah, man. he was younger than you. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that black not cracking, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, You're not that's, crack. that's what happened so out here. What else you got, Bass? What's going on out here, man? I mean, man, you heard about that Bayou Bosses uh, show that they try to shoot down yes. here with these, and it was looking for other people. It was like, because yeah. the show basically uh, highlighting black, black women in business. In New Orleans. Oh, wow. And they shooting a reality show, and they was looking for... I, I feel like by the time you're hearing this, they probably didn't find, found the other cast member, but... Really? Because I, I... Let me know. I know somebody. Hey, man, that's, that, that was the that was a talk, man. They were saying, um... The series will follow the journey of these women and some of the obstacles they face while trying to make it to the next level as business owners. The show will highlight many of their achievements throughout the season with the intentions of inspiring everyday women to follow their dreams. These women are all unique bosses in their own right. The purpose of this show is to let women around the world see success can be obtained even if you're from a small town or have encountered adverse adversities in life. And they're looking right now for, or they were looking for, a female African-American ages 20, between 25 and 40 who's earned a college degree, building a business or brand, originally from and currently living in Louisiana, and has encountered some type of adversity and open to share the experience. Oh, wow, okay. I would have suggested um, the sex sensei, 
Um, I don't think she's born here in New Orleans, but she definitely, she at one point owned uh, a sex shop in the French Quarter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, beyond that, is is building the sex sensei brand rather well. Right. I would have sent it to her, but she don't. She don't think she qualified. Well, if that's the qualifications, and I just feel like giving some shine to some black women in the city. I think that's a beast. Yeah, that's really right. cool. Right. Body bosses. So what? 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 I think say, it's what a station? really good idea. Um, it's gonna be on Congo TV, which okay. is a new station that's. I think launching down. Yeah, yeah. It's a local I, I, I'm going to find out some more about Congo. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. they shot the uh, Golden Mike thing that was hosted by Sonny Patterson. That's for Congo TV. Mm -hmm. um, I need to find out some more about this. That's, yeah. I think, I'm liking what they're putting together so far. Right. Shout out to Congo TV, whoever that is. We we'll should find we out. Should connect. Well, yeah, we will yeah. find oh, out. Oh, Congo I, got, TV. I got ways. <laughs> yeah, ways. Um, what you got? What's going on out here? You got one more? Um, yeah. If y'all are looking for other things to do tonight, there is the Diwali Festival of Lights mm -hmm. happening at the Howling Wolf. Um, basically, the Diwali is India's Festival of Lights. It's the biggest annual festival that celebrates the victory of good over evil and light over darkness. And the Howling Wolf is actually going to be decorated with all kinds of candles and black lights so that you can feel the glow. And there's going to be DJs and there's going to be Bollywood music and Latin music and Latin food and... Indian food and henna and all those kind of cool things. So that's going on tonight at the Howling Wolf, um, 907 South Peter Street, from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Dope, dope, dope. Um, you got another one, Bats? I mean, uh, there's a show tomorrow called You Don't Know the Half of It that's going to be at the Le Petit Theater tomorrow, and it's one of my favorite shows that happens in the city. Um, essentially, essentially, that it's it's a show where they have, um, like I say, five improv, improv improvisers, mm -hmm. meaning you don't have a script at all. You're going in there, and you're going to just off, the, off your wits. You're going to act off of what, what you've thrown into. And there's five um, actors who have gone, who have memorized one half of a script, only their lines. Mm -hmm. And... They, uh, they've been memorizing them, their script from these writers, also local writers, like five local writers. And they take the scripts, they rip the scripts in half, like, you know, they, all, every script is a two-person uh, scene. So uh, they, they, they take all the lines of one character and give it to an actor, and all the lines of another character and give it to another actor, and the actors will be acting uh, opposite improvisers. So the improviser don't know what the actor going to say, and the actor has to stay on script and all kind of hilarious and beautiful mayhem comes about when you have to stay on script as an actor no matter what the improviser say and the improviser got to ride with what's ever in the script with you and it's just hilarity and it's happening at Le Petit 730 tomorrow. Have you done that show before? Yeah, I'm all with that show. You don't know the half of it and yeah, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a fun experience when you're on, on both sides. At first I was just a fan because it's just being an actor watching this go down, like I said, like imp if you watch improv, improvisation basically freestyle acting, acting with no script, it's already like you're already on the edge of your seat, and then when you throw all these other elements, and there's a music component. There's a band there that mm -hmm. plays in between each uh, two-person set, and they go through. It's about a two-hour event, and it's it's. I've never gone and not been entertained. It's always mm -hmm. funny, and it's seven thirty. It was at first a smaller venue, but it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger in the community. And I believe uh, uh, my girl who started it, she's pregnant, so she said it's gonna be the last one for a minute. So go see that Sunday, seven thirty. Let me see. You don't know the half of it. Dope, dope. Um, I think we're going to take a break. Master Mind, you got a song to play? Yeah, I got a song to play. What you got? I got uh, Snaps by Sultana Shah. Okay. Shah just, or oh, she's changed her name officially to Sultana. Oh, okay. Sultana Shah. Yep, so sure. Big uh, up to C C Cecile Montaigne. I want to say that's who started. You don't know the half of it. Cecile Montaigne, but yeah. All right. Okay, well. I just don't be young, I said my girl, like, I don't want you to be like, you know, got to you know, let people know who the folk is. Mm -hmm, true that, true that. Um, this is Sultana Isham. Snatch, snatch your life. That's what this song is about, snatching your life. Um, so stay tuned to the Mentally Radio Show, yo. Um, try not to get anything on you. Not to anything. Just a, just a little bit. Just try not to get none on you. Sultana is a, um, she's a, a violinist, a dancer, and a vocalist. Sultana. As he puts his teeth in. <laughs> this has, you know, I change it every, every Thursday night. I put on the new set. Hi. This is the most uncomfortable set I've had so far. Yeah. Hello. And it's only on Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. That's all week. Pretty hurts. <laughs> is it, um, with your... Uh, yeah. What you been using that? Cause I, I, I put it in a new set every, um, oh, every Thursday night. Okay. Yeah, it's not settled yet. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, I, I see so beautiful beers back in the studio with us. I'm back. He's like, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can come in here with a whole... 
Baby, I needed dinner before it got too late. Man, I was on the way. I've been working since like nine this morning. Oh, all right. Push. I give you, a pass. you know, taking photos, some of my Delta fans, and um, yeah. Well, you look exhausted, son. Are you uh, good? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So. You've been working. Yeah. Missing Dillard um, probate show. Congratulations yeah. to all the new well members of Black Greek Ladder organizations. Um, um, the Sigmas, the Alphas, um, I believe the Kappas, um, the Deltas, and the Zetas. All those people I know definitely coming out helping out. Exactly, believe my bad. So, yeah, shout out to them. You know, as you can see, I'm an old Greek because I'm not there. So I'll see y'all on Monday. So, yeah, what's going on? Yo, y'all gotta see these pictures. Look at this, man. Melon. Melon. Buy this brother calendar. This 2018 calendar. I kind of bent it up on my bike. I'm gonna get another one. So, I'm up to it. Don't be laughing at me, B, bro. Why you. <laughs> oh, man. What y'all doing? What's going on? Let's look at the question. We just talked in this week. I was so proud of you, and I don't know what it was, and I just. I don't know what it was. Same life audition. Run, I don't know. I was just work. looking and I was just bucked up like, yeah, Jess. And I don't know. I mean, you did what something. Did I but, do? but you were just being you. So keep pushing. You know, I'm proud of you. Just keep pushing. Thank you. you. <laughs> I probably just ate something. Honestly, you just ate something. No, real. Even though we were so. No Nola Tours and Fat Girl Nola. Yeah. Was supposed to do a collab. That's right. collab. The, my friend just don't holler at me though. She don't be like, yo, Malik, what's happening? You know what? You're busier than me. Huh? Baby. Huh? 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 So uh, I was waiting on you. Mm. We did our first collaboration with another blog. So I'm waiting on you. Oh. Yeah. That happened. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So. That happened last week. That was cool. Yeah, so. Oh, Ocean was going to kill me. I know, I miss Ocean. Yes. Hey, Ocean. Um, I'm here, as you can see. Um, I was running a little late. I'm, I hope I make you proud. I'm tired. Because my voice went down too often. So that's how you know I'm tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Louis, do you eat a pumpkin pie? So what? Do you eat pumpkin pie? I think you were tripping with that. Me? Yes. I, I, I am I think are very directly cool from Africa and <laughs> some directly from Africa. They don't have sweet pumpkin. potato pies, the only pie I mess with. Holy. I don't mess with apple pie. Okay, I don't mess no, with cherry pie. Nice. I cherry may pie do a black cobbler type pie. Nasty, black apple pie. pie is great. That's gross. But 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 sweet potato nice. pie is it. I don't even know. My mama don't even buy pumpkin. You, know you so. can't sit here represent pumpkin pie and go tell me apple pie nasty. Apple pie is I'm disgusting. I'm supposed to believe your taste. You don't like apple pie, but you Nobody like likes pumpkin. Apple pie. Pe people love apple pie. Why is that every fast food restaurant is the like default dessert? I mean, it's not like nothing to really brag on. You know what I'm saying? I like white people only pies. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> they say white people, I'm buying it. I'm like, look, that's what I want. The white only pies. White only pies. That's a depressing movie, but yeah, I feel it. Best, the only way it took a comedy, it was like, in a way, it is a depressing movie. That's what I'm saying. It's one of the funniest depressing movies when you think too deep about it. Like, he thinks deep about it. I'm one of the few black people who hate the movie Baby Boy. You hate Baby Boy? I don't, I don't have you know, like a strong I, a feeling about it one way or the other. It just don't, never mind. I'm just, I just, yeah. You've never seen it. Oh, I thought that was, I looked at it. Rewind, Black Rewind, Rewind. Black rewind, 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 rewind. rewind. I'm glad he didn't say that on the on, on. Brian caught that sober. You never hit. He's like, whoop. <laughs> you never saw it. Say you know how many times he, he, didn't he, say he anything. has played that movie? Yeah. Are you not going to have like to put Bay or B to the ocean? Really? What is that supposed to mean? I don't feel like you could probably be having B to the ocean. You know, that's like um, when I don't know. Ain't got nothing to do with you being black and no crazy shit like that. I mean, like, legitimately, like, your vibe, those facts, this number, like, yeah, yeah. This so is they still, do you want to see Now, question. I just want to let y'all know, <laughs> black people in New Orleans, do not ask me about giving you extra money for groceries for Thanksgiving because you spent your money on Jay-Z 444 tickets. Ooh. I just want to let y'all know, because it seems like everybody in the city, after they paid their rent, had enough money to go to the concert. And I know y'all. I know we're in New Orleans. That's all I'm going to say.
Did anybody want to get one thing while she was here? It is not the 15th of the month. How black folks in New Orleans, everybody went to the 444 concert after they paid the rent. Yeah, they give them to that Thanksgiving money. <laughs> Black movies that uh, movies that black people should see. Yeah, in order to gain bamboozle, roots, school days, school days, yeah, color purple, color purple, purple. Uh, come to America, come to America, Harlem Nights, all right, so food, so food, so plain. Oh no, oh. no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so movies are, is it iconic black movies or movies you have to watch to be black? So what? I don't know what Brian is the question. I don't, I don't well, I'm sorry, I wasn't. <laughs> so what was the question? Movies that you know every black person should see. Yeah. Every black person should at least have seen. Should see or should have seen. Should have seen. Like the I don't know. I don't like it. The wow. music is good. The music is good. I saw something on Facebook. Oh, yeah, it was like, make me mad in five words, the, the New Orleans version. You know, put five words here to piss somebody off. Mine was, uh, frozen cups ain't ready yet. <laughs> uh, boil water advisory, effective until. Um, St. Aug band passed already. Yeah. I want a jazz funeral. <laughs> Take me to the West Bank. <laughs> what? Ooh. What? He you made know? a comment about St. Aug band. You ain't get the sound of them. All right, so we're going back in 10. We can turn it back down. We're going to do that. Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Misbelief Radio Show. We're live on WBOK AM 1230. I'm DC Paul, the millennial Arsenio, Slim Waist, Baby Face D Voice, number one choice. Um, and who's this to my right? Yo, this is Malik of No Another Tour. What's happening, Malik? 
And who's this to my left? Is Jay still keeping it real? Word up. And who's that to her left? Mr. Bats. And over there in the booth, who that is? What was that last song we played, Mastermind? As if I don't know. I just want to make sure they know who that was, man. That was New Orleans' own Tank of the Bangers. We love them here on the Miss Believe Radio Show. So we're down to our last stretch here on this episode. We like to end it with something hot and something cool. So my homie Martin, our resident rebel, he's going to light it up real quick. Light up, light up that skin on the back of that neck. Martin, who you giving the neck to this week, homie? Man, look, bro. These these old mediocre white men in this freaking industry tripping me the hell out, and they're not even tripping me, tripping me the hell out. This week, I don't know. It's this week. At first, I thought I had who I knew I was gonna have. Je- definitely, man. I had that dude that uh, killed his son for being gay. Mm-hmm. I thought that was like the most ridiculous thing. Went 2017, and dude, you like to <laughs> that, that 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 unnerved me to a large degree. So like, I already knew that early in the week. Like that's the one I'm going for. You still gonna be part of it, dog. But like. Then I got to this thing that you shared about Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. And Louis C.K. came out talking about all these stories and allegations towards him uh, being a you know per- perv as Ninny Hammer were true about him like mad like he's pulling out his private and masturbating in front of people and like it's all kind of craziness and like it's led to this it's not even as led to it's like ever since Harvey the Dick Harvey Weinstein really you could say ever since Bill freaking Cosby you hear me you just go down the list of all these crazy stories that come out what are you talking who Hugh Hefner what are you talking Louis C.K. what are you talking Jeremy Piven from Entourage what are you talking Dustin Hoffman Brett Radner, Woody Allen, they say Charlie Sheen, Lester Corey Hain, George Takai, Richard Dreyfus. These are just <coughs> lists of all these prominent actors and people in the industry that have power over other folk that's using their power not only to like to to nonsensical, nasty ass degrees, but it's 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 it's, it's a culture that's so normalized that when somebody even tries to speak out about it, they get shunned. So I'm looking on your thing, DC, and like this one dude that kind of just was like unnerving me because these women was trying to explain that's the one. One of the biggest problems when you say the term rape culture, and that instantly when you say rape culture, and mo- most people start getting like defensive, like I ain't raped nobody, I never raped nobody. Who's rape? What you trying to say? And it's it's the truest thing. Even Charlemagne was on the Breakfast Club today. I think it was today he was talking about how he had to give himself the dunk of the day because he had to finally admit to himself that rape culture is real. That if you was born, if you grew up in the late seventies, the eighties, the nineties, you have been indoctrinated with a bunch of things that you think is normal that's not normal when it comes to being a man and dealing with women. You feel me? It's not cool to be getting chicks drunk to try to. It's, 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 a, it's, it's so much stuff that I ain't about to even list it all, bruh. But it's just ridiculous. Do your research. Everybody got Google, bruh. And the main thing you need to start doing is listening to women when they tell you what's been uncomfortable for them and to them for years. And when you look at Louis C.K. and his list of these nasty-ass, pervy-ass white men, and you look at this list and you, what they always doing was knowing that in our society, women always got to be nice, got to not be confrontational, got to blah, 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 blah. Use that to your advantage and then just be... Ugh. Hold on. Not all white men, though, because there was some, some black men in there, too. I'm just saying, I'm saying, I said, man, that's why I said it started with Bill Cosby, dog. You know what I mean? I'm, saying, I'm just saying, like, I'm talking about these pervy white men that's come out about, but generally speaking, dog, I'm talking men. I mean, when I said the rape culture thing, I mean just for all us. We all been taught wrong, and at a point you got a part of growing is realizing that some things that you that that you gotta uh, let gotta, gotta be, that you have to let go. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And that's do some research, people, because this is just the product of us letting stuff slide that we shouldn't let slide. Especially, especially when we talk about our women, and we especially when we talk about as men talking and dealing with other men. You feel me? Most times we so scared of other men that it's like that's why our daughters and our wives and our cousins and all this got problems. And the only time we care is when it's our daughters and our wives and all them when really we should just be caring about our fellow humans off the dump. So Louis C.K. and all y'all pervy ass white men and pervy ass men in general, you get that neck, you get that front. It's like it's ridiculous that this is the this the conversation. You feel me? In 2017. But I'm happy that this seems like the year of accountability. It seems like the generation of being accountable for actions. So let's t- start holding these ninny hammers accountable. That's all I'm saying straight yeah, up. Yeah, man. And there's a dude, the dude you mentioned on my Facebook status who was going back and forth with the girl. Like, it, it, it devolved into, like... Name uh, calling yeah, it man. nonsense. And he was like, this is the most attention the man has given you in a while. And I was like, come on, but, man. But I see this out. often yeah. in the comment sections. It's women trying to, and these women was breaking it down. Mm-hmm. Like, look, this is why this is a problem. This is why this is predatory. He was taking advantage. He was using his power. He pulling out his freaking private and masturbating in front of women. I mean, I don't know why that got to be explained to you as being something wrong. You feel me? Every time he wouldn't even take in their points, he would just come with tired ass gifts like, oh, I'm yawning. Oh, you just yeah. being a feminist. Oh, you just being dramatic. And that's what so many men do to women, dog. And we 
we all got to stop that if we going to go forward in any kind of manner. Yeah, Straight you up. Gotta, you got to unlearn and relearn. Because white people do that to us, dog. We always talk about the white man and all this other stuff, and we do it to our women. Man, it's crazy. It is, man. That's that neck giving it to pervy ass men in general. Um, keeping your pants, you heard me. You ain't, did you did you say the, the, the D word? I didn't say the D word. Okay, I, I almost let it slip just now. But all right, man. Shout out to you, Bass, for, for keeping that. They blew me, dog. You just threw my word. mood off, son. Right. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. serious about that. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to take it down some. Uh, we're going to like to end this show with uh, a look back at something that came before us. Uh, you know, something antiquated, if you will. Uh, what you got for us in conversation, Malik? Yeah, so I definitely want to shout out Mrs. Sankofa, um, Oshun, she's not with us. But, you know, it's always hard to get through it without her, but, you know, I'm going to give her my shout-out. Don't try. act like this is going out. You know <laughs> so I got to give her shout-outs. But um, the Sankofa session, uh, we're going to focus on John T. Scott. Um, John T. Scott was a master artist. A lot of things that you see all around the city, a lot of artistic works. Um, right here in, on Gentilly, if you go down by the um, Nelson and the little um, um, Catholic school, there's a sculpture that John T. Scott built. But John T. Scott was born in New Orleans in 1940. He lived on a farm in Gentilly, and from an early age, he was inspired by art. He later attended high school, and then he attended Xavier University, where he earned a B.A. Um, he went on to Michigan State University. He earned a Master's of Fine Arts, and he returned home, to, to, and he took a position at Xavier University. Now, this is very important because he took this position, and Xavier was a school geared towards the science, but he was always a, um, an advocate for art, and Norman Francis, the president, always supported him in his support of the arts. Um, he taught at Xavier for over 40 years, and in that 40 years, he inspired a generations of artists. Um, John Scott was known as a master teacher. Not only was he a great artist, but he was a great teacher that inspired others. Um, he taught at Xavier, and the university community was very excited. Um, as a master um, educator, he was a um, collagist, a painter, a printmaker, a gallery, museum, um, and a curator, and a private collector. Um, his art is seen all over the world. A lot of people don't realize that the gates that Noma closed their museum with was sculpted by John Scott. Hmm. And this is important because as a kid, John Scott was not allowed to go into Noma. He, because of segregation, he couldn't go to Noma. But here he is, 30 years later, making their gates. Um, he died after Hurricane Katrina, um, and his legacy is living on through his son, Ayo Scott. And Pass It On is, um, which is a monthly spoken word cultural event, was started from his words. Um, anytime you did something good for John Scott, he wouldn't accept payment. He would say, pass it on. So his son decided to pass it on with a group of his friends, and I'm on a curator team now, and we post this monthly event. So John Scott is very much still living with us. Mm -hmm. So he's still a huge inspiration. The Art Village at Xavier is named after John Scott. Um, you can see his artwork throughout the entire city and in major private collections from the river to the lake. So this year, um, this San Cooper session is dedicated to John T. Scott. Yeah, shout out to John T. Scott and shout out to Audio Scott for keeping that legacy alive, man. I love, I love that dude. Yeah. Um, that boy's had me curate one of these, pass it on, son. Um, we are you having. Are you both mentioning that to me? Yeah, well, we have an open call for artists um, that we have selected to curate, pass on, because we want to see other people's artistic visions and we want to support and mature and cultivate. Kind of like John T. Scott, we want to support mm -hmm. other artists. Because in New Orleans, man, we all come in up. Yeah, that we are, man. That we are. Well, this has been episode 36 of the Misbelieve Radio Show on WBOK AM 1230. Um, I've been DC Paul, the Millennial Arsenio, and who are my awesome ass friends? Yo, this is Malik of No Nola Tours. Where can they follow you at? At No Nola Tours on Instagram or Facebook. How about you? This is Jay Steele, keeping it real. You can follow me on Instagram at Jesso Steele. And on Instagram at Fat Girl Nola. <laughs> and how about you? That actor guy, Martin Bass Bradford. You can find me on all your social media platforms at Mr. Bass.
episode 36. Oh, I forgot to say, uh, I'm Slim Hotep, S L I M M H O C E P, but I'm going to have to change that, yes. I guess. You um, you will. But you can check me out at whoisdcpaul.com. And uh, yeah, man, don't get nothing on you. Play yeah. something, man. Somebody take us out with a little something. Be able life. Be able life. What's that song? Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I got to get a new um, calendar. Bend it up. So let me know how to get two. Oh, yeah. I want one too, man. That's sure, man. That's the calendar by Patrick Mellon for 2018. Which, that's a, that's a good time to put out a 2018 calendar. I'm going to take it by all the people. Ma- uh, Mastermind. So let's reset my Quinn Hakeem we're playing right now. Um, thanks to our millions and millions of viewers and listeners all around the multiverse. Um, the multiverse. Uh, shout out to my awesome ass co host yeah. doing a damn thing. Shout out to Oshun, India Mac, mm-hmm. Kalena, mm-hmm. Madani, mm-hmm. Susan Henry, mm-hmm. Aaron Neville, mm-hmm. um, and the whole big VOK staff. Uh, Joseph. Yeah. I'll be Mr. Joseph. Mm-hmm. Um, Major shout out to the homie, beautiful Brian himself. We love him so much. He's a star. We shine bright like a Brian. <laughs> shine bright like a Brian. All right, you guys. Um, thanks for viewing, whoever the last three of y'all are. Um, see us next week, same time, same place. Right here on my Facebook Live, you heard me. <laughs> what up, Courtney? See y'all later.